Screw Janine and her sister in the Philippines <laughs> doing her, her, her ding dong thing, right? I'm here with my real ding dong, <laughs> just going, just going bing bong, right? <laughs> Hey guys, and welcome back to a very, very special episode of Half an Ice Day podcast with your favorite host, Janine. And Joshua. Today, we are celebrating a very special milestone. We are. Because today is episode number... 69. Nice. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I'll introduce you guys. Don't worry. (laughs) Hold your applause. (laughs) (laughs) With great power comes great responsibility. So we had to invite... The best of the best to make this happen, which is why we are joined by Karama's very own Andrew Tate <laughs> yes. and his Emirati sponsor. Thank you, <laughs> Jordan Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> it's really awesome that this episode features two of the funniest people in Dubai, mm-hmm. and then you two. Okay. Thanks. For- <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I love it. <laughs> we should have Janine on the roast battles now. <laughs> yeah, we should. <laughs> Your mic is too noisy. Stop laughing. It's really funny. Jail. Okay. Okay. Ladies, where's the camera? Okay. If Anand looks familiar to you, that's because he must have harassed you at Barasti at least oh, once. Oh, my God. <laughs> but we did have Anand on the podcast before in episode 57. Um, so that so check that out if you want to hear more of his life story. And for Abs, we're so glad that you are here. Abs was featured in episode 60 of this podcast, and we really wanted to celebrate this episode with the funniest Emirati comedian in Dubai. But Ali Al Sayed couldn't make it, oh, so we had to settle God. for you. <laughs> Good one. Good one. It's true. It's true. It's funny because it's true. <laughs> so before planning this episode, Joshua told me he has been struggling lately and needed to get clean and had to attend an AA meeting. So thank you for being here, Anand and Abs. Thank you for the Abs. AA meeting. But thank nevertheless, you. thanks for being here. And that's it. I'm done. <laughs> That was good. That was amazing. That was really good. Wow, wow. I didn't know that it was going to start with a roast session. Yeah. Hey, are you free next weekend? We're going to have a roast battle. Yeah. Speaking of My roast, team. It'll, be fu- it'll be funny if we don't tell Joshua and she just shows up like through the curtains or something. Yeah. It's like, your just next opponent in. is Janine. It's oh, like, I would, oh, die. I would die. You'd be ready. You'd have so many jokes. I would have online. so much against yeah, Josh. Speaking yeah. of roast, Josh is like, I have nothing against you, honey. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, do you have something you. for Josh? Uh, well, I was going to, but then I keep getting interrupted. Yeah, <laughs> 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 it's not as <laughs> oh, Should we start from the beginning? No. <laughs> it's, it's apt that you're roasting me because you look like a Nepali priest. <laughs> 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 never, yo, you said that before the pod, and it's still funny now. <laughs> yeah. It'll still be funny after the pod yeah, as well. Yeah, it will still be. Oh, <laughs> That's yeah. why I wanted to change, but no one's allowing me to change. You look fine. Yeah, you're you fine. look fine. Listen, where's your church? Can I come? <laughs> <laughs> See you later. How do I convert in nomine patri? <laughs> you do actually look like a pastor. <laughs> like a like, huge pastor. Like you're, you're gonna invite us to a Bible study today. <laughs> Should we call you father or daddy? What do you like? <laughs> daddy. <laughs> daddy. <laughs> Whatever you guys prefer. I'm okay with anything. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, sh- shall we start off with a rapid fire question? So I'm gonna I have some questions prepared. This is oh. her segment. You can now. you can be okay. you can be on I have no too. idea about this. Let's so go. Um, okay. Am I involved or just them? Yeah, you can. You can be involved. Uh, Explain I'll, to them the dynamics. So I'm just gonna ask the question and the first thing that pops into your head, you say it. Can be oh, at the same this time. Is, oh, yeah. This is where we get Can canceled. be all at the same I'll, time. I'll let you answer them first. Just yeah, I like how it's convenient for me to answer first when. <laughs> so you wanted to speak, right? Yeah. Here's your chance, <laughs> dude. Okay, I'm gonna lower down everyone's mics because you guys are really. No, no, I'll edit when I edit. I'll, I'll reduce the volume. Um, okay, so I'm gonna ask the question. All right. Uh, first thing, what's one piece of advice you would go back and tell your younger self? Invest in crypto. <laughs> that's you actually a good ready one. With that. That's actually good. I have some Bitcoin. Okay. Uh, respect is more important than love. Yeah, but wow. Ethereum's more important than respect. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dogecoin is the way to go, but <laughs> you can't buy an apartment in Dubai, Maria, for five point two million respect points, can you? No, <laughs> that's true. That's true. What about you, Josh? Piece of advice that I would give my younger self. Yeah, and you have to be quick. It's uh, rapid don't be fire. Don't be too hard question. on yourself. 
Okay. Yeah. What about you, Janine? Be kind to everyone you meet. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Who have you destroyed? <laughs> Who have you been like? <laughs> She's just getting She's Vietnam the, flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> She's the nicest person, Back by in the my way. Days. <laughs> okay. Next question. If you could be any sea animal, what would you be and why? I would be an otter because otters are extremely romantic. I don't know if you guys know this, but when otters are falling asleep, they hold hands so that they don't they drift do. away from each other. They do. Have yes. you seen Abs, those videos? You could learn a little something about romance I, from how otters. How does Anand have like an instant answer for everything? Yeah. And it, that was so quick. Like as soon as I finished my last word. He was like otter. Otter. <laughs> no, I realized it because like, they, they also like find rocks that for their suitable partners. He's so passionate it's about it. <laughs> yeah, they're the true romantics. He's been waiting his whole life for this question. <laughs> 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 I wish someone would ask me what's the animal one of me. You know, you know that meme where you know that meme where there's like a girl and a and her partner and the girl's like looking to the side. I bet he's talking to other women. And he's like, why won't anyone ask me <laughs> like, what sea animal? animal I'll be? <laughs> Speaking of which, Abs, what is your favorite sea animal and why? I want to be a squirtle. That's just a, a <laughs> what is the question Pokemon nah, or sea yeah. animal not Pokemon I, we live in the desert what sea animals <laughs> yeah. are you talking about I don't desert know desert animal no I want I want to be a lobster I want to be Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson speaks about hi from Toronto chapter one I like lobsters and lobsters are very good with themselves and we should all be lobsters <laughs> <laughs> and I'm hungry now Jordan Peterson coming out Josh um Sea animal? Yeah. I think like a turtle, maybe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Low and slow. Yeah. No, because the shell is my protection from the bad people. Okay. Oh, that's a good you one. You thought about that. Anand was good. The four words started coming down slowly to form the sentence. You're like, because the shell makes okay. protects me. What about you, Janine? Um... I would say a mermaid, but they're mythical creatures. So, but what I'll, are we I'll, doing I'll with the squirtle I'll mermaid say, nonsense? Yeah. I'll Otters, stick to a mermaid. <laughs> 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 you're doing the one the right answer to this question is otters. Okay. <laughs> Next question. Okay, if you had a time machine, what part of history would you go back into? I would probably go back into the '80s, um, and then I would probably go and talk to Quentin Tarantino and convince him to be in his films. Because I'm a huge fan of Quentin Tarantino films. What what role would you ask him to? Like, which of his films would you like to be in? Kill Bill? Pulp, be Pulp Fiction, <laughs> honestly. Pulp Fiction. And I would want to be Bruce Willis from Pulp oh, Fiction. Oh, yeah, you would. Yeah. Just uh, being asked to put a watch up my ass. <laughs> to, I don't know if you guys have ever seen that movie. <laughs> I've never seen Pulp Fiction. Okay, out of Pulp context, that sounds horrible. Now I realize. <laughs> I, I absorb it. You know. <laughs> Where would I which go Which time? time? Yeah. Oh man, I, I, w- I wouldn't go so far back. I don't have a specific time, but as long as that there's still toilets, I don't want to be mm. using things on the floor. Or yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I want a porcelain, yeah. I want a throne. That's you still want your bidet. Yeah. India you know, still has those. The Shatafa is easy, yeah. but I actually hmm? want a seat. India okay. still has the holes yeah. in the floors for toilets. That's true. They still have so that the train here. tracks is okay. <laughs> they still have that here as well, and some people prefer that, but yeah. I'm just like, no, I want. I want, I'll be comfortable as long as the toilet has a seat. Oh, right. you can't do the, the squat? I'm sorry, bro. I don't go to the gym. <laughs> this is flex. Weird flex. Oh, you can't do the squat? No, no, no. I mean, if push comes to shove, yeah, I will squat. Had to, no pun Of course. Yeah, exactly. When, <laughs> when, I, when I was in Malaysia, it was like, I didn't know, but like there's a public toilet. Mm. And then like there's a left side and right side. The right side is all like the squat ones. And on the uh, right is one of the like the actual the seats. western yeah. yeah and i didn't know like i went on and i was crying like i can't hold this position for like more oh. than three minutes then i'm like i get out and i see the the, the pot and the other one i'm like oh, i should have just gone right instead of left no but. way <laughs> but did you finish your business yeah. i had to and i almost <laughs> fell inside <'cause> that's <laughs> that's my fear that is my fear as well like you know yeah it's a big hole you <laughs> can fall into it exactly or like exactly. at least one leg can fall into it and that would be the worst nightmare yeah that you can i have. still like that abs's fear of toilets is what's dictating him in which part of the <laughs> past he yeah. wants to go yeah to. i come like back to ni- really 1912 important. and they're like, i'm like do you guys have toilets they're like what's that <laughs> no, no i went too far <laughs> we don't have freedom <laughs> <laughs> there's a great recession happening right now <laughs> yeah actually 1912 was the recession yeah. okay <laughs> what's yours josh back in time yeah i don't know i want i actually want to see how it was to live in uh, like 
prehistoric times. Not prehistoric, <laughs> like um, like when like Game of Thrones style setting settings. Setting. 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 Now he's obsessed with Game of Thrones because I made him watch Game of Thrones. Oh, oh. you're just getting. And into he that? talks to me every day as if like. You are the the light of my moon, my queen, and I'm like, can you stop? Whoa, <laughs> this is so you're trying Every to be day. you're trying to be called Drogo. <laughs> He's trying to be called Drogo. <laughs> it's like my Khaleesi, and I'm like, okay, bye. Like, you have a good do night. Have Khaleesi vibes. I, I love said. Khaleesi. Yeah. That's yeah. why she brought it up. She wanted to hear that. Like every <laughs> other person says, you know, you look like Khaleesi a little bit. She no has a way. portrait. I'll show it to you guys later of her as Khaleesi, and it's like, this is real. Like, this I can kind of see it now. Mm, you're yeah. like Khaleesi before the corruption. You know? <laughs> She's like, ha, ha, ha. that's coming in season five. Where are my dragons? Bring yeah. them out. Yeah. And okay. what about you, Janine? Uh, probably the sixties, the hippie, um, the hippie oh, stage. Yeah, yeah. really that's concerts and everyone's like peace and love. Plower yeah. power. Yeah, yeah. Cool. yeah. plower power. Plower power. <laughs> yeah, in the Philippines. Yeah. In the Philippines. Okay, last. Okay. What is your favorite memory during your childhood times? Hmm. Uncle. Was it, does it have anything to do with tissue boxes? Oh my god! No. Don't bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that we story? can we can talk about that. I know the story. I don't know Janine. I, I, don't, I don't think Janine knows no. about this. No, you want to share it? The whole world. Oh my god! Do you want to share this do tissue we, story? Uh, if, if you're comfortable with we, sharing it's it, it's not his way. favorite. Memory, we can we can talk way. about it after this okay. rapid fire. It's, it's okay. not his favorite memory. It's my favorite it's memory. Of his life. You know, you know how I found out about this story? We were once uh, after like a comedy kick show, and like Ima just put some hip hop instrumental. And we're all just doing like freestyle. Then he starts talking about this tissue box. Where I'm, I'm like, what are you talking about? And I'm like, yeah, it's a real story. I'm like, no way, no that's way. a real story. No way. It's a good story. I'll tell you guys. Okay. So, so um, but my favorite memory, which is definitely <laughs> not this one, is I remember being in Malaysia when I was like around five or something, and my parents took us to like these golden temples, and they had bought me a kite, and I had never flown a kite before. And I was flying these kites in this golden temple. And I was like, this is really nice. And uh, then my parents were like, okay, you guys stay in the hotel. We're going to Bangkok. <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was one of my favorite stories. <laughs> you, guys, you guys stay in the hotel. We're going to go back. <laughs> 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 they didn't abandon us. <laughs> I can just imagine him standing there looking and his dad's like, hey, I know you're having like a memory moment right now, but we're going to have to end it. Like, just come on. We're leaving. Yeah. That's it. What? Was that really your favorite moment? Like flying a kite? I think so. It's a moment that I think of a lot that like brings me peace. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> yeah. Why is it so funny? I feel bad we're making fun of his memory. But yeah. <laughs> I know, I know. No, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. What about you, Abs? What's your favorite memory? Um, as a child? My favorite memory as a child. He's just getting flashback of slippers being flown. <laughs> yeah, which one do you want? The whipping one with the stick or the... Sli- no, I've never been hit as a child, thank God. I was threatened once as a child, but then that scared me enough not to ever get... No, no, not threatened. Like, okay. if you don't fucking... If you yeah. don't make it, we're going to put your head down on the cotton. Yeah. No, it wasn't like... No, yeah. it was just like... And you're like, yeah. yeah, never, no. I don't want to reach the you second You were like part. Max. Yeah, oh, up. poor Maxi. Oh, I my said, God. No, please. No. I was worried I did this and he would have, like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my favorite memory as a child, I think, like, Eid in Oman, man. Like, mm. as a child, you don't really appreciate as much, but I look back, I'm like, oh, it was very sim- simple. Yeah. Mm. The hardest part was waking up at, like, 6 a.m. because we used to, like. But it's it was nice, yeah. Just, yeah. like, the family and they had, like, a lot of tasks to do i guess it was part of the culture like 6 a.m boom 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 go say hi to these people nice. eight o'clock in the morning people are going to come to us and then lunch and then more people come and then this goes on for three days and mm-hmm. the U- in the uae it's nice to be with family but it's more of like a one day affair yeah even eat in the uae was fun yeah but it's like a whole segment of what's going to happen like schedule yeah it was not like mm. you'd see relatives you haven't seen in a while and yeah. it was genuine happiness yeah. yeah and you all get like idea right yeah the yeah. as a kid you're a like kid, yeah, yeah you're like the money thing yes but now i'm like oh man i miss this person they're no longer the with us or, yeah thing, i miss yeah. that person it was nice yeah being around cousins and all that yeah. exactly janine yeah. trying to flex her cultural you know knowledge exactly. she knows yeah. her things what about you josh um father josh <laughs> yeah. This is gonna be a recurring gag. When I got knighted into knowledge. the priesthood, it's like when I yeah, when I got in, accepted in the monastery, <laughs> they gave me this shirt as a as a gra- This is my graduation <laughs> robe. Joking? Yes, this is my graduation. I get rid of all my material things <laughs> and join. Yeah. Um, I think it was uh like something very similar to you, but it's like uh maybe 
birthdays and Christmas. Yeah. yeah. In, in the Dai's household. Because it, it was very funny, like, growing up, like, if it was my sister's birthday, even my brother and I would still get gifts. So. I'm sorry, bro. You said, you, you, said, when you said, it's a beautiful memory. But when you said the Dai's household, I'm like, this guy watches a lot of Game of Thrones. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, House of Dai's. House of House of Dai's. <laughs> <House Dyer's. laughs> Sir Baratheon in common. This is how he Give speaks to me every day. Pig. Every day. It's good. He's getting a, a culture. Yeah. He's getting like, culture uh, than to fiction. The old go- uh, to the old gods and the new. I swear to you. And I'm yeah, when something bad happens, like seven hells. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Can you do a whole set like that on stage where you just speak like this? I would love to, but it's like a 2013 show and me coming up on stage like, where has this guy been in his entire life? <laughs> It's okay. The House of Dragons just came yeah, out. That is true. You can that relate it to that. Are you waiting for him to finish Game of Thrones to watch House no, of Dragons? No, I couldn't. We uh, watched. We finished Game of Yeah. G- uh, House, House of, of Dragons. Dragons yeah. Already. Oh, is it good? I haven't even watched it. Really yet. good. It's quite okay. good. Yeah. I'm waiting for them to pile up. But yeah. yeah. What's your favorite childhood memory? <laughs> and it's like, Ab, shut the app. <laughs> I'm up. like, no, there's no structure. <laughs> Carry to on. I need that somewhere to the be. Structure. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was young, when we would go to the Philippines, my sister and I would always think that we're, you know, these two popular girls because we look different than anyone else. Mm. So my mom, <laughs> just to feed into our ego, would like invite some of the kids around the neighborhood give them like you know sweets and chips and everything and we would do a concert my sister and i and my mom would make them make make them sit and watch us (laughs) and my sister and i really thought we were like famous and really good we would like put spice girls on and my sister and i would practice in the morning like this is the choreography that we would make okay wow and then when kids come in like we have to let them do the applause first and all of this until now is still in my head of like how my sister and I thought we were celebrities in the Philippines. That's amazing. But we're not. My mom was just like bringing other kids from the neighborhood. You guys <laughs> hungry? You want to have an afternoon snack? Watch yeah, my yeah, children. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you could you could really get the whole village to your yeah. house. If you just that's amazing. Them, like, your mom could pull a crowd. Noodles. Exactly. That's, that's my mom's like, whoever wants to watch my two, that's my two a crazy children. Here, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, can I get your mom to fill up our spaces exactly. of the comedy shows? <laughs> I'm, I'm sure performing she can. For five people. <laughs> she gets like one of those, what is that? In, uh, Filipino snack I always see. Is it hoo hoo or something or dong 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 ding dong? dong, ding ding dong. dong. <laughs> you guys want some ding dongs? Yeah. Just an old auntie like you want some ding dongs? They're like no, there's a comedy show, comedy show ding dong. Oh, this sounds. I've fallen for this trap before. I'm not coming. Those are in. names in the Philippines, by the way. Like ding dong is like a some real name? men are nicknamed as ding and dong. No way. Yeah. There's a famous. There's Filipino a... actor. His name is Ding Dong Dantes. Ding Dong Dantes. That's hilarious. Which part is his first name? Ding dong. Ding dong. I don't know. Okay, wow. so yeah. if me and Anand presented to you, like in the Philippines, which one would be ding and which one would be dong? <laughs> I think, I think Anand would be dong. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yeah, hey, I just because be he's ding. browner doesn't mean doesn't yeah, mean only shaped. I'm <laughs> <laughs> shaped like a dong. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, Vietnamese currency is called dong, right? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's the dong guy with the oh dong. Oh my god, I want to buy a Vietnamese currency now just so I can tell any woman. Do you want some it's dong? I like, wonder how you'll get like 5 million of it. I have sure. a lot of dong, dong. to give. Oh my I god. have to keep holding this. It's, hey, so it's funny how Joshua was like, if uh, Janine does things like this, yeah. signaling, you gotta... And, and then I she's keep like, telling him. She's like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and the mic's like hitting his eye. No, I, I feel it is shaking a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> okay, so Anand, are you are you free to tell your story? Sure, I'll, now? I'll tell our story. I need to <laughs> I need to preface this by asking a question to to everyone in the room. Well, I guess just yeah, yeah. Um, are you guys circumcised? Yes. Okay. How funny would it be if Janine told <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Me on, too. The, on the count okay. of three, everyone who's circumcised say they're circumcised. One, two, three. <laughs> circumcised. <laughs> I, what? <laughs> So this is the story of how I, as a child, as a little boy, was accidentally circumcised by my sister. Okay, so there's (laughs) Janine's eyes. Just we already know the plot. Put a disclaimer right now, guys. Yeah, disclaimer right now. Like five minutes ahead. You You can you can cut ahead. (laughs) (laughs) No cut in. <laughs> We've got a lot of skin in the game, so we got <laughs> no. but um, basically, I was I was a kid. I was about five years old, and I was um, was this after or before the kites? <laughs> <laughs> this was after the kites. <laughs> oh, this was after Malaysia. <laughs> but uh, I was running around my house, just filled with like hopes and dreams, uncircumcised dreams, you know, <laughs> uh, watching childhood cartoons, and uh, my sister was on the phone. 
So I went up to her and obviously, like, I'm trying to get her attention. And uh, I was completely naked at the time, as every five-year-old kid is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I... No. <laughs> no? <laughs> Ads and I are like, I don't no. think so. <laughs> it's not, not a thing? No. Clearly, clearly, it's a split decision yeah. here. 50-50. Listen, I, I was a very, very... <laughs> fun loving kids okay i just so i'm running around this room my sister's on the phone and i'm trying to get her attention so i do what anyone who's trying to get attention from someone else does i do the helicopter of course right so for those of you that don't know what the helicopter is it's when you do a rotational motion with your hips wow (laughs) when you're naked that's a great to simulate a helicopter the blades of a helicopter Helicopter, helicopter. <laughs> because Bosnian is become. <laughs> you ever seen a helicopter? No. Yeah, well, okay. uh, Joshua, you haven't been doing your job properly. Okay. Too. <laughs> exactly, Joshua. Where, where Wait, is the move? So like you're making your pp I'm making like my that? pp go yeah. in a rotational. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. A, it's yeah. it's a lot of hip movement. It's yeah. a lot of it. It honestly takes a lot of skill. They yeah. then have a fan growing up, and, and then those. <laughs> <different Yeah>. I <laughs> was scoring. <laughs> 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 yes, Papa. <laughs> Coming, Papa. <laughs> Can I get your attention now? So I, so I think that I'm doing like the best show on the planet, right? Screw Janine and her sister in the Philippines doing her, her, her ding dong thing, right? I'm here with my real ding dong, just going, just going bing bong, right? <laughs> Oh my God. So my sister, my sister gets frustrated because she's trying to concentrate on the phone with her friend, and she's gossiping. She's like a teen. She's like talking about whatever uh, that girls talk about. But then I'm like doing Ding the thing. Dongs. She picks up a tissue box on the in the corner uh, of where she's sitting, and she chucks it at me with great speed at my shamalama ding dong, mm. right? And what I can only describe next is there was a sound that was emitted. Okay. And it was like a visceral sound. Like, like you know the sound of puppies, you know the sound of rain. This was not like one of those sounds. Mm. This was the sound of like guttural pain. Wow. Uh, I looked down and it looked like there was like a whole bloody mess that was going on. Oh, wow. I ran around my house yelling for my maid because my, my parents were... In Malaysia. <laughs> yeah, in Malaysia. Black now. <laughs> Malaysia, truly Asia. Your dad's like, I'm tired of this fan. I need air conditioning. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So I run around, I get my maid, and she looks at me like, I'm not getting paid enough for this. <laughs> <laughs> I quit. Nope. <laughs> I'm like, nope, not I'm today. out of here. <laughs> so my, my mom comes back home, and she takes me to the hospital. So this you had to wait, like... I had to wait no for, way. like, an hour straight up, and I'm trying Dude. to, like, hold it back. Like, <laughs> like, you know when you're doing, like, arts and crafts with a paper, and then, like, the glue is coming off? <laughs> like, I'm trying to, like, just piece it back together. <laughs> I'm a kid, but even as a kid, I'm like, this might have lasting effects. And when your sister was still on the phone, like, (laughs) my brother is This is the thing that pissed me off the most. My sister takes the phone and she's like, I'll have to call you back. I'm sorry. And she's doing this whole thing. And I'm like, what about me? My brother's being so annoying right now. Bleeding bleeding all over my legs. Uh, (laughs) I I gave him the tissue box to wipe it. That was the reason why. The funniest thing is I remember the tissue box was fine tissues and it was anything but. (laughs) Oh my gosh. Hey, hey, this is the perfect time to talk about their sponsors right now. Yeah. 20% off fine. 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 (laughs) Coincidentally, coincidentally, Anand also has 20% off. Yeah. Uh, coincidentally it was half half <laughs> off but uh so i ended up going to the doctor and the doctor was like well he's technically already halfway there right so my mom being the indian mom she is is like can i get a discount <laughs> like she knows her bargaining skills right i know well, standard circumcision costs thousand it's right. already half off so can you just like complete it exactly so at that point i'm like a kid i don't know what's going on and they're having these conversations so my mom goes okay like we go back home and then he goes uh you have to wait like a day or something because it's too soon into the thing like you have to let it settle oh. i guess or something it's too sore maybe so sore or yeah. something so <laughs> yeah, i don't know why i said it like that i'm like so sore <laughs> me so sore <laughs> no but uh, i go back the next day and i didn't want to go back to the doctors so my mom says we're going to disneyland and i remember this very specifically <laughs> oh 
And I walked out of there like that was not Disneyland. <laughs> like I, I should have had a shirt on. Then was like I went to Disneyland and I like oh, it was this a horrible circumstance. circumstance. Can we just say the agony that you had to go through, waiting for your mom an hour, going to the doctors, then waiting another night? Yeah, how to get you? fixed? And you know what was the worst agony of all? Fixed. I lived. He's I, not a dog. Exactly. He got fixed. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I won't lived, be doing helicopter for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I lived in a joint family, so there was like 15 of us in this family. And after the procedure was done. I had to sit in a tub filled with water and salt oh. yeah. to let the, the skin oh. heal or whatever in front of my entire family. <laughs> and I remember my cousins would just come up to me and be like, ah, what's that? Why is, why is your, your wang bleeding? You know, like, so you had another show to put on for everyone. I had another show to put oh. on, yeah. That's Last when I knew show. I wanted to become a comedian. <laughs> oh my God, man. Now how many, like 15 people in, in a, an apartment? In one apartment, yeah. So it was how like many three. toilets did you have? Like, everyone had to use the same tub after? <laughs> No, it was like a plastic tub that we had in the living room in front of everyone. <laughs> and I would have to go sit Anand, in there. Can you pass the remote? It's like, Anand, <laughs> what? <laughs> Anand, stop being antisocial. Sit with the family. He's just in the tub. Get off your tub, <laughs> <bro>. <laughs> <laughs> oh I can't imagine the little five-year-old just there sitting. Oh my god! He's like, guys, where are you going? We're gonna go have lunch. I can't get out of this tub. Can someone help me? No, we'll come back later. I have salt. <laughs> bring the salt. I bring the salt to the table. So that's the story. It's too. Dude, oh my really gosh! Can, do you remember how that night went? Like when you had the you know the the scar in the beginning like before you had the procedure done like how did you sleep um, that's what yeah. i'm trying to figure out and how did you pee i just remember Probably. there was a yeah, lot of there actually. was a lot of crying there was a lot of tears and then like um Damn. i think there was like ice involved at some point um do you still remember the pain that you? oh yeah that's one thing i it's like a trauma response like i remember right, that right, pain right. Wow. because it was the sharp edge of the the tissue oh box gosh. and she that's chucked it at me your Crazy. luck huh yeah i know <laughs> man uh, and like was, uh, uh, how was your sister throughout did she actually come to she didn't even bother coming to the hospital i, said, I need to finish this phone call <laughs> i still have a phone <laughs> Well. But other than that, you, you didn't have plans on getting circumcised? Is it No, as a five year old, no, not in general. <laughs> <laughs> Disneyland. <laughs> go to Disneyland and then get circumcised. Yeah, I didn't wake up one day and I was like, you know what? Is your Might sister now for forever indebted to you because of that? My sister's felt very bad about it. She's caused me a lot of pain over the years. Yeah. Like she this one time she left um tea in the oven. Uh, and this is partially my fault as well. She went uh, to shower or something and the oven was on and for some reason in my head as a six year old I was like the oven's gonna blow up if I don't <laughs> stop it so i open the oven and i take out this boiling hot water out of the oven with oh. using tissue as whatever oh. and it slipped and fell and oh. it went all over my thighs and i got third degree <laughs> burns over no your way. Again. i got 30 yeah, <laughs> who's trying to assassinate your dong my guy what is this series <laughs> of unfortunate <laughs> ding dongs <laughs> it's been through a lot damn oh <laughs> my gosh but how are you how are you today are yeah. you okay i'm doing How's good everything? i'm doing okay yeah i wore a suit as you guys can see because this this uh, episode is very important to me 69 is a number near and dear to yes, my heart yeah. mm-hmm. yes. yeah. and no episode 69 would be complete without a circumcision story Absolutely. i was so. talking about my mom she's 69 years of age you pervert oh uh-huh. i'm so sorry <laughs> <It's> horrible <laughs> disgusting zero to 60 yeah, i was just gonna say does your mom go from zero to 100 <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. and can i just ask like does that story ever get brought up like with the family they're like yeah son how are, like it's like 20 years later by the way how's your <laughs> dong like does anyone ever like go you could tell me every once in a while they bring out a tub with salt yeah <laughs> like why don't like you your cousins it? do they still look at you and start laughing they're like anand you haven't been seeing someone for a long time is everything okay <laughs> so, every time i walk in a room with a tissue box i just like <laughs> <flip on. laughs> oh, no. it just hears that ripple. napkins for me please <laughs> and my girlfriend is like why don't we ever have tissues around here <laughs> you will sneeze into what i tell you to sneeze <laughs> just reusable towels here and no <laughs> tissues did you ever tell people in school like because uh, you know kids talk in school right mm-hmm. and it'd be like how was your summer my summer <laughs> was great i went to china how was your summer i was in the hospital in the bathtub for like three weeks <laughs> this is the first time i'm dry i'm just used to being moist did you guys actually share like when you're young and you get like you go through circumcision do you share it with your friends no, is that something uh, you share i was born Ah, okay. To me, this was okay, this was course. factory okay. installation, factory. pretty much. Yeah, <laughs> it was yeah, just yeah, yeah. came 
from the fact for, that for was, me it was when I was 13 and I had no, no idea way. I was going to get circumcised why at 13 yeah. why so we we don't uh, so Catholics do it like same style like immediately once you are born like I think within a week <laughs> you make it sound like it's a restaurant <laughs> do you want a souffle do you want it do you want it sunny side up or do you want no a, they don't do it right away do they do you yeah. want a flambe no. we'll add a bit of spice the kid is uh, the kid because for me, I I was crying the whole time. I didn't have, I didn't even know what a circumcision was. And my mom was just, well, we were in Philippines once, <laughs> and she's like, "Come, we're, we're going out." Literally, I'm just going out. And we're then going we're, to like, Disneyland. Going to a, a hospital, and then like doctor comes in and injects my pee pee, and I'm uh, like, "What oh are you God. doing?" Wow, you for the anesthesia, and then he's like, "Then I was wearing a red shirt. I remember this. It was a hang ten red shirt. Hang ten. I was sweating nonstop. That when I got off the bed, the dye from the shirt transferred to the wow. bed. Wow. I thought that was my blood at first, but then it was just my shirt. Oh my dye, god. Because I was just sweating profusely. You had a house call. That's like you had a doctor come to your house and no, not no, no, in the no, way no. you we, wanted. We went to a oh. clinic and it was like a, a clinic like in a village. So oh you mean god. the white sheets of the the yeah, clinic? Yeah, yeah. The bed. And my brother was just chill. Like the, uh, like I don't think the anesthesia hit me as hard because I was feeling literally everything. You needed a little bit more. Yeah, I, I heard it's like a rite of passage thing also for men in the Philippines. E- e- kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's when you're it's like, a oh no, thing yeah. mostly as well. Mm. But yeah. why yeah, but wait so passage, late? Yeah. Why wait? Why if that was what you were gonna do anyways? If every Filipino person was gonna do that, why not just do it when you're born when you can't remember that? I, I don't know what's the logic on it. I, I I don't know if this is true, but they say like when you grow up, like it grows back. I don't know. No, it doesn't. Or maybe no, the I've formulation. Checked. Actually, <laughs> <I've checked. laughs> so checked. far, so nothing. <laughs> maybe they wait till it grows until the actual size it's supposed to be, and then. So it's a Doesn't better cut sense, or something. Because if it's your baby, it's like this small, like you might miss well, or something. Well, it's been fine. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you yeah some of girl? us have <laughs> sisters to, <laughs> to impress. So, uh, Anand's sister is a doctor now. No. <laughs> She's, She's a surgeon. <laughs> I knew I wanted to be a surgeon when I could perform circumcision with, with a, a tissue, tissue box. box. No, but yeah. after hearing how in some of the villages, how they actually perform it, I was like, I'm glad. <laughs> my so that's down true. Down in the Philippines, I don't know if it still happens. I'm sure some villages it's th- that still occurs but the it, it would be like um like all of the kids in the village who are of the right age mm. would come there would be a guy yeah, like a village circumciser would be there village yeah circumciser. Yeah. yeah so it's a village circumciser he would sit you would sit right across him there would be like um a, rock. a, a log a, a log, rock yeah. where you would wow. put your you would sit you would put your wow. ding dong wow. and he would be like and wow, then like and a butcher and yeah. they make you chew this leaf exactly exactly like, everything numb kind of but yeah. then it, people say it doesn't really work it just makes you a little woozy and philippines yeah, yeah and then you oh. jump into a river after yeah, yeah. Yes. so after that you spit it onto it that's yeah. what i heard like while it's Kinky. there after you chops it you <laughs> wow. spit whatever you're having on the thing and then you jump into the river oh yeah my God. so the leaves i think are guava leaves which is um i don't know herbal anesthetic or something kind of. anesthetic yeah. so you use it they mash it up you put it there you jump onto the river all together with all of your other friends who are of the right age wow so you all experience it together and then you go home they were they were they skirts. wear skirts for <laughs> like <laughs> a week yeah i'm so sorry but yeah. i just imagine someone's passing by the village it's like i've been walking a long journey <laughs> i need to sit down civilization he sits by, he sits by a log and he goes hey what are these what are these <laughs> pieces <laughs> of is that is this foreskin is that bacon <laughs> It's like been drying out in the sun. I've, I've never seen a bug like that before. It's become a different color. Endangered species. <laughs> Don't you guys have that dry skin snack? The pork, the pork skin. Oh, yeah, the right. oh yeah, my the, god! The pork hey, someone left something here. <laughs> oh god! But yeah, that's why, how is, why is the river blood? Why does it taste like guava? <laughs> <laughs> so can you imagine the cross contamination and infection that you can oh get my god. from jumping into a river, which is one of the like. The, dirtiest microbial yeah well even the water. what's his name the village circumciser yeah. i don't think he's yeah pretty he's just like a butcher somewhere and they're like hey you got five minutes just to do these 10 kids and like, yeah oh, yeah okay yeah and it's like that same knife he takes do you yeah. re- do you remember the were you awake for the procedure or were you uh no i went under oh yeah <laughs> and so did your skin <laughs> 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 there was no guava there was no spit I, mean, I should have gone to my sister and been like hey here's some guava so did you have to wear a skirt after 
Uh, I think I was just naked yeah. from <laughs> the bottom down, from the waist down for like a couple. Never of learns. I remember it being very embarrassing, by the way. Like my cousins just being there, it was it was very very embarrassing. Damn. I can imagine, man. I I would never show my face to anyone if that ever happened. Damn. All right. Okay. Well, I'm I'm right here, man. <laughs> you don't have to rub it off on me. <laughs> There's the. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as someone who got circumcised at 13. Yeah, bro. Yeah, what? <laughs> like at that point, it's like. She's my voice changed, and I'm like, okay, time. <laughs> Please. Why don't. did your mom decide like at 13? This I have is no the... idea. I, I think it's it's that's how it is in the Philippines. No, no, like it's. I know the standard age is like eight or nine. So, ah, like, okay. yeah, but I think it is because it's the Philippines rite of passage thing. Yeah. 13 yeah. puberty. Yeah. Perhaps. Wow. My my friend was telling me in Malaysia. And now I'm not 100% sure of the accuracy of the story because I've probably mixed up a few facts. But she said, I think there was like a fam- it's a family affair. So they oh, do it okay. in the house. They get the circumciser. And then it's like, now she said everyone becomes a part of it. Now I don't understand as in, do they get, they participate in the circumcision part? Like, my turn. Grandma <laughs> wants a piece, you know? And then <laughs> save a little bit. Don't cut me. off too much. Yeah, exactly. Save some for me. <laughs> And then, they, you know, they, this guy's having flashbacks. Poor guy. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking because Jim Norton has a whole thing about this and it's it's terrifying. There's I won't get into it, yeah. but there's a there's a priest that comes and performs the circumcision and then he he cleans the wang in a certain way. Yeah, yeah, I've heard about that. About. Yeah. It's called he's called the moil. Moil. Yeah, I've yeah. heard about that, but let's not get it. We let's apologize to all our. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sorry that half of this podcast. This is not the way I was expecting this episode to go. We need structure. This is what happens when sixty-nine. This is what happens when you name the, ep- what, when the episode okay. is sixty-nine. You knew what. Wait, so you're that. saying the Malaysian? Fun, uh, they do it like okay. a family thing. The whole family. It's like an occasion. Okay. You know what so I mean? So maybe the same, like. But I not, of passage. Do you think they take a picture at the end? Like, it would be funny <laughs> if they take a family portrait. Everyone's like. And the kid's like, eh, which one, which one's the one who got it chopped off? It's like clearly this guy is like crying. Everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, Yay. good job, buddy. And and they give him money. I, apparently, oh, they give him money. Okay. But like, as if money, well, he'll be like, oh, that'd be good. I could pat then. it down. Did you get any money? No, no. You lost the money if anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why is my wallet so? <laughs> went to some village yeah, to doctor. pay for that that cheap. But they, but, but it, it's cheaper in Philippines. I think that's the reason my mom waited for so long. Mm. Yeah. No, yeah. it should be. In my opinion, it should be done as soon as you're born. If you're going to circum, why? Well, yeah, I, yeah. I don't remember it. I don't. And to me, that's naturally how it is. Like mm. the one time I saw one that wasn't, I'm like, oh my god, there's something wrong with this. He needs to go to a doctor. And it's mm. like, mm. no, it's these are two types of people, you know. You know how when you're born, you're uh, like sometimes the mom keeps like the umbilical cord as like a. <laughs> Yes. Uh, as a, a souvenir yes. <laughs> what if in the circumcision is the same way <laughs> just like keep it in your wallet and bring it up because other moms keep hair as well the first haircut no way yeah. Yeah. my mom oh. had my umbilical cord that she still has what? Yeah. Yeah. she brings it out every once in a while I'm like please <laughs> put that away that is just whips in with it disgusting Dude, I think I, I wouldn't even be able to look at that it's, you, it's, it's you like, say it's that, tiny. but it's I think not, when you become no. a father, it's different, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't people eat that or the placenta? Or placenta. What? <laughs> yeah. 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 what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Josh was like, it shocked. helps with skin. It's apparently really good. Yeah. 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 It has a lot of collagen. So I'll take you to a place to have... in Dubai. They sell placentas. <laughs> Just... No, but if you're given a choice to eat it, would you eat it? No, I'll give it to my wife. How much protein? My is wife. The woman eats it. Well, I mean, she has the more yeah. right to it. So, would you eat the placenta? No. How much protein? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they, make pe- they, they, they make them as pills. Placenta pills. They dry them up. They crush them. So, the them. baby comes out. They take some substance, go to a lab, make it a pill, and then sell it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It'll be funny if you're like you're like in the middle of the childbirth, and you just see some guy who's like, yes. You're like, what are you doing with that placenta? Shh. You got a baby. <laughs> Enjoy the baby. <laughs> Shh. Placenta. <laughs> just like. But yeah, it's a thing. It's yeah. a thing. Wow. Yeah. It has like growth hormone in yeah. it and stuff. No, no, it's good. It's good. A lot of you. vitamins, minerals, collagen, etc. Yeah. 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 Taste. This episode is brought to you by <laughs> collagen. <laughs> yeah. Twenty percent. You thought <laughs> not just issues. We have everything here. <laughs> we just go off the rails in this yeah. podcast. I think it's maybe the ADHD. Maybe that's the why ADHD they wait for the yeah. age. I, I was thinking maybe they're giving them the choice, but no. But at eight, would you know I want to get circumcised or not? Yeah, because other no kid other men don't get yes it, right? Having I think it's their a... things snipped. No, so I think that's what they do as a child. Yeah, because yeah. like now there's a movement for like women, for example, before they would get their ears pierced, like mm. they would get their daughter's ears 
peers. As soon as they're born? As soon as they're born yeah. or when they're less than a month or two months old so that they don't feel the pain as much yeah. or they don't remember the pain. Yeah. Um, but now there is this whole movement of like, no, you should give you know your daughter a choice, choice. I think it's of stupid. piercing her own ears or not. So stupid. I think I wish I had a choice. Yeah. I think it's stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like, I wish I had a choice. No, but jo- uh, <laughs> Abs actually choked. brought up uh, ADHD, which is interesting Ooh. because I wanted to ask you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you did. Is this, this is your a podcast? I know. <laughs> 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 I'm kidding. Hey. No, I, I did hear the ADHD. We start, part we start interviewing Janine and it. Josh. We're like, yeah. sure. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you guys, you, you have ADHD and yeah. you have ADHD too. But mine right? is inattentive type. Inattentive. Yeah, inattentive? so there are two types, right? Of ADHD, one is inattentive and the other one is the hyper one. Yeah. Okay. You're so, definitely the hyper one. I think, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think you are. So, yeah. yeah. But I have moments of unattentiveness. But I guess it's just being tired. Yeah. Yeah, thanks Dr. Anna. What about you, bro? You so, so are you still you on the are you still on the Ritz the Ritalin? The, 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 the Ritz you mean Carlton. The Ritz, the Ritz Carlton. <laughs> I, was, I was talking uh, to him about this the other day because I was concerned because I was like, you know, I saw a study where a majority of school shooters are on Ritalin and other mm. ADHD yeah, meds. you went mad. What are you doing you your free time, man? Bro, <laughs> he, bro first he wants, to, he wants to be what an author and now he's like researching Ritz. Yeah. But no, I, I, got, I saw a doctor. I didn't just like pick up pills and stuff. And like he was very like not, he wasn't convinced that I had it. Mm. He was like, let's talk to your mom and find out your childhood. And then he talks to my mom and he's like, let's do a survey. And then he goes, why do you think you have it? And then we'll get the survey. He's like, by the way, you got nine out of nine. You got full marks. I'm like, I've never gotten full marks in my life. So, <laughs> and then he goes, we'll start off with Ritalin and stuff. And I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> and I, I told Anand and Anand just goes berserk. He just messages me and he's like, bro, get off Ritalin. You know, it's crazy. There's so <laughs> many things about it that's bad. And then you'll end up as a school shooter. I was like, what? what? I don't want to go back to school. <laughs> <laughs> Our own <laughs> Indian high school. <laughs> <laughs> Just right. like, Why are you here? <laughs> I can't even. And then, and then I love that's how his logic worked. Like you're gonna be a school shooter. Like yeah, I'm gonna start taking the pills. At one and point, I'm like, suddenly. suddenly, I'm like, hey, I need to book a flight to America. <laughs> Convince this high school that I'm still a high school student. Make it through, slip through the cracks, and then just start shooting at like that's. You so never s- know. You never know. Does but it I, help you though? No, it doesn't. I I stopped. So oh, I, I okay. took it like for a day or two, and oh, then. Don't leave me hanging. Oh, oh sorry, bro. <laughs> I started taking placenta pills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just waiting at the labor wards. I'm like, you got some placenta for me? Yeah. So um, are you on any medication? No, I'm not now. But uh, yeah, what's funny is like he'll try. He's like, try it out. And then see how you feel. And instantly, like, my heart rate just went up. I felt anxious. And that was, like, one of the side effects. And I'm like, I don't like this feeling. Mm -hmm. And then, like, I just stopped. After two, three days. Two, three days. And I told him. And I have a friend who has actual ADHD. And he takes medication. And uh, I think he takes Concerta and something Mm -hmm. else. And he's like, let me try the Ritalin. And he took the Ritalin. And he's like, dude, that stuff really messed my heart rate. He's like, I wouldn't recommend. Mm. Yeah, it was really but it's, weird. But it's different for everyone. Ritalin yeah, is short think acting. Works. I think yeah, it works it's, for other um, people. Yeah, a quick release. Concert is uh, release. like a delayed release. So throughout the day, we'll get. Yeah, and there's Adderall and stuff. Yeah, and but Adderall's not here in the UAE. Yeah. But and are you, are you on anything? Uh, Concerta. Concert. I just got Ritalin. I never, op- I never opened the box, though. Uh, I wouldn't recommend, bro. I'm still on Concerta. Yeah. I opinion. remember in college once I, I took Ritalin just because I had like an exam coming up and I wanted to like focus. And become a school shooter. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> I had an exam. I just wanted to get out of it. It was a one-time <laughs> thing. Okay? He has a pistol and he's writing the exams. I didn't study this part. Well, I guess we got to <laughs> Bruce Willis this. I remember just walking around my room like uh, being like, I have so many things to do, but I would never get around to actually doing the things. I would right, just right. be like, I have so Overwhelmed much to do. Just like where to start and yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. I think Anand might have a bit of ADD or I ADHD. definitely have a bit of ADHD, I think. But it's very controllable for me with exercise and stuff. Do you feel do you feel like when you, you take the medication you become less artistic, if that makes sense? Like your ideas don't come in. So when I start on day on the first week of it, I, w- I felt like invincible. Oh uh, yeah. I wouldn't even like realize like it's four PM. I'm like, wow, I accomplished like hundred things. Today. No way. I didn't even eat lunch. My mouth was super dry. Yeah, I got really dry yeah. mouth. But then after I started wearing out a little bit, and uh, but it does help me with my fatigue because every day, yeah, no matter what, like I get ten hours of sleep, two hours of sleep, I still feel extremely fatigued. No way. You should get your test levels checked. I did, and he says I'm I'm normal. I just had a vitamin D deficiency, but apparently vitamin D also. Yeah, but you should get. 
like the supplements get the vitamin d supplement yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I i was on vitamin d for some time now i just drive like with now the i windows just give down. vitamin d <laughs> <laughs> sorry the joke was there no but yeah it's uh it like you said it works different for everyone like yeah. i had to increase my concerta for me to actually feel the uh like effects again mm. and then i had to take a break for like three weeks at one point just to like yeah i felt so my body was getting too used no to that's it and, that's normal by yeah. the way yeah i've heard that from people yeah have ADHD. it's called medication vacation or something medication just, vaca- yeah um but no but in, as a co- comedian do you feel like you don't write as much jokes when you're because i've heard that it, it inhibits creativity like one person described it to me this way he said uh, i'll have 10 ideas normally and maybe if i'm lucky i'll do one or two and then he goes, when I'm on the medication, is like, I might have less ideas, but I'll finish them all. So, like, I'll have maybe four ideas mm-hmm. and I'll complete them all, mm-hmm. you know? So, for me, it's it's very similar, but, like, like in the last six months, I think I've only written, like, two new jokes. Yeah. And even doing those two jokes on stage, I've never got gotten to. Yeah. Because uh, I, I also have a problem, like, memorizing stuff. So, like, if Same. I have to memorize a joke, it'll take me forever. Um, even like on roast battles there's sometimes I'm like oh what's my next roast and I have to look at my phone like that's what happened on our last battle as well yeah. Yeah. like literally the, the crowd was already like getting there and then I had to stop like oh crap it's I have to fine though. open my phone and stuff but it, it ruins the flow right like if I everyone's know. already hyped but you gotta know like being on stage you're already under pressure that's true like, that's true and you're doing like a high you know what is it called high dopamine or high whatever intensity thing and then coupled with that, people are looking at you and then the pressure and you want to win. Yeah, you know? I, w- I was just going to ask you guys how, because to me, like I just, of course, I, I watched all of you guys. How do you do it? Because technically, if someone doesn't laugh, doesn't that directly affect what you're going to say next? Does it like... It can throw you off Yeah, for me. throw you off and, you know, take it, it, your confidence off. I've reached a point now, like I've tried and tested my jokes. Yeah. So like some new jokes, okay, I'll be like, okay, maybe I need to tweak it. But the old jokes, I know like this one will always kill. And then if they don't laugh, I'm like, oh, it's not my fault. Yeah, there's a lot of other variables that people need to understand that ha- happen, like that influence the thing. Like maybe the vibe is weird. Maybe mm-hmm. the host didn't do their job that well. Mm-hmm. There's a, g- a famous comic, his name is slipping my mind right now, but he said it doesn't uh, the bombs are still there but they're very far and few in between now uh, okay. like every once in a blue moon like i might have an off night or something but then most of the jokes like i've said that are established we know they work okay yeah what about you dude so uh, like the, it, it's it's very random like um even when i started i used to do the same set at a like venue a mm. kill exact same set venue b like completely bomb yeah and i usually have like certain things that <clears throat> are certain comedians that i benchmark myself against like if anand goes before me or like earlier in the show and i'm later and he does well i'm like okay that means i'm gonna do well because we have mm-hmm. similar comedy styles but it doesn't always work like that now like even i would go up he would kill and i would have that little sort of confidence and then i go i'm like okay i didn't do well at all no but it's been weird these days man like the, i feel like people aren't willing to laugh as much for some i don't know just the past couple of months especially after i came from america that's a different topic. We'll no, but but it, but it's so true. Like it's so contagious. If no one want, everyone wants to laugh, but no one starts off. Every, yeah, it'll be quiet. Do you think yeah. people get, people are more sensitive now to laugh at like darker jokes, mm. compared to how I, it I was don't before? Think, I don't no? think it's true because I not I, here, I, not yeah. here. Not I also the, went for Sean's show recently, and it was like people were er, like erupting. The room was crazy. But they all came. So They're that's Lebanese, a different right? thing. So they know. Yeah. They Lebanese know Sean. The they audience. all came for Sean. No, but Lebanese audience, man, they're the best audience. They were like, super supportive. Really? Even to this day, they message me on Instagram and they're like, when's your next show? The three and best audience members, I think, are like Lebanese, Indians, and Filipinos. Like they're the Unfortunately, best. Filipinos. So technically, Josh barely, and I. Yeah, pretty much. But we never Sean. get <laughs> Filipino audience members. Like there's so few in between. Ima, Ima manages to bring. But Ima then uh, also one thing that I noticed, like I'm not saying it in a bad way because I love it personally, but every comedian now has a Filipino joke. Yeah. And I don't know how Filipinos actually take it. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Like, like Anand's Filipino jokes kill. Like, I burst out laughing. But at the same time, I'm a comedian, so I know how to take a joke. I don't know how Filipinos, like, oh, if they hear a made joke, they'll be like, hmm. So I, that's the thing. I, they're yeah. also quite soft in that way. In my experience with my jokes personally, I always like to preface it by like how much I love Filipinos and that's why like I want to yeah. incorporate them into my set. That's and true, in general, they've always been received amazing by Filipinos. Yeah. People that have a 
problem with that is white women usually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> They're yeah, the yeah. ones who the have heckled me in the crowd before, yeah. being like, "That's rude." That do, you, yeah. do you guys have a preference where you want to go on, like, the set, like on a on stage, on the bill? Um, like, do you have like, oh, I want to go first, or I want to go last, or I wanna go, like, do you have a preference? I I don't like going last because there's a lot of pressure on going last. I like, love going last. Really? Yeah. I I like the only like once I went last, mm. but I, I didn't want to call it like a headline. And before me, McDod was on. Mm. He killed. Oh, yeah. I came on and I'm like, okay, now this is big shoes to fill because now they're thinking who's going to be better than McDod. And I go on stage and I'm like, oh, shoot, what have I done? I think yeah. that's that's in your head, usually though. Usually first, I, don't think, I like to go first. I don't yeah. think people in the crowd usually, you know, think that yeah. the last one needs to be the best. No, 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 it, no it, it is, is a, it is, it is. It is, yeah. it is people. Yeah. Yeah. There's a pressure. Show. Yeah. There's a pressure around that. No one would stick around that long to mm. learn. But the th- sucky thing about going on the last is you're just sitting there like sweating and then you're looking at your jokes and just sweating. And then for me, yeah. I don't like to go first anymore, but definitely like I, like I prefer like third or fourth or something is a good spot for me. Or if I'm going to go like towards the end, I want to go like second last. I, I like mm. that. Okay. I'm comfortable. You're there. a great host. You're an amazing host. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm enjoying yeah. hosting yeah. a lot. I really enjoy it. Yeah, you're coming. You have lot, I think you're you're great to go on first because you if the host doesn't manage to like warm up the audience, you're there because you start off with sometimes you start doing crowd work, yeah. yeah, which is also still amazing, and then you can go into your set. Yeah, but I like go. I, I used to go first when I was using like still doing like deadpan, and that was the worst. Imagine going up first, like the host will hype up everyone and like hi, well, uh, <laughs> today I hang myself and stuff and it's like okay what's going on here right? yeah so, well if the host does his job really well then like he can set it up so that you come up in the dead pants yeah, yeah there's, yeah. A, yeah. there's yeah. a host i'm not gonna say his name but i love how he just says a joke sometimes i love this guy by the way i love him so <laughs> i know, much. It I know it is, I yeah. <laughs> and then he'll say a joke and then it's like it doesn't land and he goes all right so this guy I, <laughs> just like straight, all the way but, from Abu Dhabi. but there's no like there's no comment so most people like if you do a bomb like let's say you bomb a joke you'll be like oh well that didn't work yeah. Yeah. Uh, but it just goes okay so and then it just goes <laughs> <laughs> it's on <laughs> give it up for my best friend on everyone's your best friend there's, there's another <laughs> host <laughs> who, whose favorite technique for crowd work we'll call it crowd work is he'll go up to someone and be like hi where are you from and they'll be like i'm from india and he'll be like okay how, where yeah, you, that's the same where host. You that's the same host, bro. Don't pretend it's someone else. It's We're giving too many. Comment down below. Who you think it is. I feel I know this guy already. Yeah. The more that you talk about oh, it. Oh my god. But, but you know, like having said all these things, even a lot of comedians have ADHD. Not only like in the UAE scene, mm-hmm. but also Around internationally. The world? Yeah. Well, it helps with creativity, man. Like when you have so many ideas, how many ideas have you come up with? And they're probably genius ideas you just didn't apply. I'm glad you did this podcast, but how long did it take forever? She probably pushed you, the Khaleesi. Yeah, definitely. She ordered thee to make a podcast. <laughs> yeah, it, no, you're right. Like there's like a lot of things that I've like parked in my mind, like even small joke bits and stuff. Like there's one joke bit that I ho- completely wrote because it was missing something in Anand's roast once. Mm. Helped complete it. Oh, oh great. yeah, yeah. yeah. You and, have I actually, to write. and I actually asked Anna, like, is it okay if I use this? Like, of course, if you have roast battles and yeah. you want to roast me, I would drop that joke. Mm. But, but the joke had actually helped me with that because it's one of the first jokes I ever wrote. Yeah, didn't the bombardy, didn't work, and yeah. I always parked it. And then, good. And then Anand's roast. I'm like, oh, that's a perfect bit inside this joke to complete it, and it works. Never get rid of well a joke. Well. Never ever any idea. Just write it down, even if it's like three sentences. It's like yeah. chicken ran cross. Mm. Uh, it's like cross run oh crossfit oh mm. chickens doing crossfit that's a chicken I'm, you know you have to write everything down yeah you so know? there's this thing adhd tax if you don't write something you immediately forget it within like an hour oh, bro i do i have so that. even if i know like even if, like if i'm driving or something i will like maybe send a voice note or yes, something yes yes but i have to remember like even falling asleep and i think of something i need to wake up get my phone or just write it down before i fall asleep because i'll Forget it the next day. Do you feel, sorry to hijack this, guys, but do you feel like if someone gives you directions to somewhere, you just get lost? Like, they're like, oh, you need to take a U-turn, and then on the second, I just blank out. I autom- Now to the point where it's like someone's telling me, uh, when you leave, I'm like, I'm not listening to this conversation. I'm just thinking about butterflies now. No, like, no, it's, it's Yeah, that's true. Josh. It's like, you give him directions, and he'll just be like... Yeah, but if, like, someone, te- say? <laughs> if yeah. someone texts me... Yeah. Or like send me a voice note that I can refer back to. That's fine. Yeah. 
but like to your own pace you mean yeah yeah but if someone tells me right like that pressure moment i'm like i'm gone yeah i just feel like with the uh, writing thing as well with the, with adhd which i don't know if i have or not but mm. like i get so many different ideas um but then the execution becomes the hard part where it's like i have 50 things that i want to do and it catches my interest for a little bit where i will go and like get into animation and then i'll create like a bunch of animated mm, stories and yeah, stuff which is amazing like, by the way. thank you uh and squared subscribe on youtube yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on <laughs> but, instagram as well uh yeah on instagram too <laughs> yeah. uh but uh, and then i'll do that for a little bit but then i'll be like oh i want to do a podcast with joshua yeah. uh, and uh i also, <laughs> also want to do like if that were a dropping thing. hints <laughs> yeah dropping hints uh but then it's more about like now i have all of these things but i wish it's like a master of none kind of a thing where i want to yeah, yeah, yeah. no you have to incorporate all these things i think like no one is a master of anything unless you've done let's say 10,000 hours you know mm-hmm. and that's gonna be a long unless time you're a pilot i guess <laughs> yeah i hope so <laughs> i think the one thing is comedy now that i really want to do because i'm seeing both of you do it is like i want to travel outside and see comedy in different places yeah. Yeah. let me tell you about my travel stories yeah, yeah. Do. that was yeah. definitely yeah. how did that feel going out seeing other comics outside of the uae it was good and bad but mm. now and then i went into this like spiral of bad but uh where did i go first i went to canada you went to la right yeah i went to i went to canada dc washington dc <laughs> new york and then la i like how you just want you want, just, you want to turn I'm this into it. you want to turn this into tiger king <laughs> no, you know how it is in la have you seen patrick <laughs> bet david on valuetainment no. he has he has this podcast where he's like so you went to la right <laughs> okay i don't <laughs> know like ask questions no. and you went to all of, well Every, in each state you went for a comedy a show. show ah you did a show no not myself okay. like i okay. would jump on shows nice uh, there's this comedian based in Minneapolis, American guy, Ali Sultan. Shout out to Ali Sultan. Funny guy, really nice guy. And he's like, he came here for the Dubai Comedy Festival and mm-hmm. we just okay. hung out. And then he's like, oh, if you're going to America, I'll connect you to all these people. And like he, like as we say in Arabic, Magasar, like he didn't leave a stone, a stone unturned, you know? So yeah, when I got to Canada, so here's the thing. Let me tell you how it is in, in those parts of the country. That's what I felt. Mm. When someone comes here, visits us, they're like, oh, I'm a comedian from it. Oh, my God, bro, you want a spot? No way. I got you. Boom, 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 boom. You go there. It's like, I'm a comedian from there. Cool. Like, mm. it's not uh, as supportive as like. Mm. So, so Sorry to cut you off, but even when like the Dubai Comedy Fest happened this year. Yeah. Um, all, the, all the American comics came towards the end of the night after yeah. we did whatever yeah. we had to. Yeah. I'm talking like, uh, and I'm like, I'll just say I'm a comedian. Let me slip it in. Yeah. Like I'm a, I'm a, I'm a comedian. He's like, I was like, oh, that's nice. So I'm like, um, yeah, you're. <laughs> Can I repeat myself? Yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm a comedian. Yeah. Did Let, you hear me or something? Let me tell you though. No, every, I'm not gonna say this. Mainly the scenes like that, but not all of them. There's comedians, like big comedians. You'll tell them that, and I'll be like, oh, what spots are you doing? Like they understand your struggle. I used to right. say, like, you mean another comedian? You download all their trauma, mm. like all the stuff they went through. <laughs> and you're like, I know exactly what. Well, you looking for spots? Yeah, I got spots. Okay, uh, talk to this guy, talk to this guy. So Ali hooked me up with the people in Canada and then this girl, Noor, who opened for Hassan Minaj. Wow. Yeah, when he was touring in Toronto, she opened for Hassan Minaj. And she's like, oh, we got a spot at this comedy bar. Go to it. I go. Now, here's the thing. This is what I noticed. It was a very spiritual trip. I did a show. It was mainly Westerners, white people. Everything was fine. I was doing my old set. And then the moment I said a black person, I just go a black person. And they go, <sighs> their sphincters just tighten. I was like, what mm, happened in the room? Really? And it works fine here. Yeah. Next day, I do a show uh, in Canada, in Toronto, with Arab audience members who were raised in Toronto. They die laughing mm. completely. And Nima Naz was there. If you know Nima Naz. Oh, yeah, guy, he's hilarious. He's so, so good, funny. bro. He's hilarious on stage. He was there. He and does shit. the Gary Vee impressions. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. I think the guy I know, is like, I... do you have blueberries with the shawarma? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And Che Durena. Do you know Che Durena? No, he also, he's big on TikTok. Also funny guy. Noor was there. She was hilarious. Uh, it was a great show. You know, it was a great show and everyone's nice and people talk to me afterwards. The first show, I was like, oh, this is a bit weird. So that was done with Canada. And then when I went to D.C., I met Arzu. Yeah. Mm. And then Arzu was like hooking me up with gigs. Uh, I mean, she was doing a gig. So I'd attend and then be like, oh, you're a comedian. These are like not as established comedians. You know what I mean? Right. I don't want to say they're freshies. Let's say amateurs. We're probably mm. on the same level. 
like oh we'll put you on a spot and they had like 12 comedians they put me in there i felt bad but it was a good set a uh, good set and then there was like a lot of open mics this is the thing this is where it gets so dc toronto maybe a bit easier to get in new york and la it just That's was sad. so mm. tough new york i had to pay for an open mm. mic which bothered me it's like pay five dollars for five minutes you go there every audience member is just the comedians but it's mm. in a nice way they've done it in this place called the new york comedy club which mm. is the way she set it up she set it up like ema you know how ema set up kickers in the beginning yeah where it's just the comedians sit and then it became a proper show mm. But these guys, like, I'm sitting there. I'm like, what am I getting out of this? I'm right. really, I'm just testing the waters. I'm doing my jokes that are based in Dubai. Again, I did the black thing, and everyone's like, huh. you know, I'm like, what the? Were f- they like? all white? No, uh, they were all white. But there was one black audience member. Yeah. And then they kind of like looked at her to see her reaction, and I'm like, guys, like. To be like, if she's fine, then we're fine. Yeah. yeah. And then I did another show uh, at the Grizzly Pair, I think. And that's like really right next to the Comedy Cellar. They grab people who don't get their tickets to the Comedy nice. Cellar. Yeah. And go, scalp them. 12 a.m. show, man. It's tough. Ooh. Like, And there's a bar behind you with music. You're at the back and there's no doors. There's just curtains. So you can kind of hear the music. It was fine as well. I did like 15 minutes. Nice. And then I did the black part and they're like, mm, and then I just moved on. Yeah. Uh, and then, so clearly that black thing didn't work in the I States guess they're just, a, it Canada. was weird. Yeah. Mm. And I was, to me, it's not, I was like, oh, they're weird. I just wanted to know why it didn't work. Yeah. Like I kept trying to figure it out mm. and no one really gave me a straight answer. And someone's like, oh, you're, you can't say that because you're not black. And I'm like, maybe mm. that's the reason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. And then I did LA and LA was, yeah, this is, this is where the spiral like spun out of control. So in LA, uh, there's another comedian called Ahmed, Ahmed Al Qadri, really nice guy, very sweet, funny. And he quit his full time job, became a full time comedian. Wow. And like, it's a struggle, man. It's a huge struggle. Yeah. Like, I'm like, I do it. Like, I thought moving to LA was the, the upgrade. The pinnacle. Yeah, yeah the yeah, pinnacle. The mecca of comedy. Right? Yeah, and I was like, it feels like it's a crash. Like, mm. you get there. First of all, LA is just a tough place. There's weird people, yeah. hard to like connect with people. And then everyone's the, trying to make it. Everyone's, everyone's trying to yeah. make it. See what you can do for them. Yeah. yeah. And the comedy mm. shows aren't like, it's weird. Like, you'll do it on a laundromat or something. You know what I mean? Like, oh, okay. Yeah. So I did one set. Ahmed set me up. It was an expensive show. I'm not going to lie. I think it was $20 a ticket. So imagine you're like, am I going to, like, as an audience member, would you pay $20 to see a not mm. so famous comedian? Mm. Mm. You know? So imagine what. What, what was it? Like converting it into dirhams in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, like uh, 75 dirhams. Yeah. 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 Without a drink, without anything. Mm. You know? And then minimum two drink. Oh, no, no there wasn't in mark. those ones. But in the f- big clubs, there's a minimum two drink. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I was watching all of your stories on Instagram and I was like, oh yeah, my even God, I was he's watching here. Religiously as well. It's like, so fake though. That's the thing that I hated as well. At the end of it, I was like, that's so f-. like, no one knows. I've seen the dark side. I'm like, no one knows, but I have to pretend. Yeah. And that's what I hate. Like, oh, Laugh Factory, I was lucky. I got, I, like, I knew, I knew Tehran. So I hit him up. Oh, you know Tehran? Yeah, I met him at the comedy festival and he's like friends with another mutual friend. Here's the thing. I got to tell you about the Laugh Factory. This was so... Alhamdulillah, like I'm so blessed that I had this opportunity. But this is the thing: people don't know the dark side. Mm. Like people are like, "Oh, you did the Laugh Factory, amazing!" Blah blah blah. By the way, every gig I got offered, I was like offered like maybe four hours before the show. It was extremely stressful. Oh wow! Like I'm, I, I was in Malibu. You know, I was just in Ma- Malibu's an hour away. And it's like, hey, you're coming to the show tonight. It's like, oh, so it's confirmed now. It's like, yeah, <sighs> take an Uber for an hour, pay wow. like God knows, yeah. Damn. So I, I do the Laugh Factory and I'm chilling in the back. I'm like, yeah, I'm a comedian from to buy that are cool no one bats an eye tehran comes chat with him a bit and he goes this is what they do in la this is how like it's not the pinnacle they just hate you they do this they have something called the cold open mm-hmm. it's just a comedian shows up does five minutes brings the host and then the the show starts you know what i mean oh it's usually God. given to oh, ed so brutal that's like a sacrifice like oh, a human wow. sacrifice it's so, like the guy who's like makes announcements like get your drinks yeah, yeah. basically it's wow. so brutal so i go so tehran's like uh, you're gonna do the cold open i'm like thanks oh. and then i'd seen the other shows before i'm like this is brutal so i do the cold open alhamdulillah was great and then i spoke to like ba- basim yusuf was there maz mm. jabrani tehran nice. um there were like other Arab American comedians. So then I speak to Tehran. I was like, hey, do you have any advice? Like, what do you think? He's like, honestly, you had the hardest set and you did good. Okay. You could see these other people, like the other comedians, not the big ones. And it's like, they had proper 15 minute slots and they, they just 
messed it up you know mm. and then he's like you have to make it personal they just gave me like cliff notes i was like okay thanks i appreciate it and it was good to know like uh, i did a hard set and i did pretty good you know yeah. that's awesome yeah. yeah but then you're like this is what we strive for i don't want to live this life like i don't want to be there Mm. To no, live but that life. So both of you, do you think you want to like be a famous comedian selling out arenas? Or are you I okay did. with... I did want I, to be. I did as well. I think my goals shifted over the years. Where like initially, like I wanted to be like uh, traveling the world and doing comedy yeah. and like selling out theaters and stuff like that. But now I, I want it to be more like if I can just go on the road with my friends and like go to different gigs and like sell out these these small places and stuff that's that that would make me super happy that's a good goal because that's what shifted and when i came back i was like everyone's talking about america the states and blah 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 it's like it's saturated it's tough don't get me wrong if you make it in america you make it around the world true yeah. but i'm like why are we focusing there we have all this part we have the middle east we haven't done the gulf yeah you have india philippines you have all of the east that's true why yeah. not focus on that yeah. i'm like let's do our own thing and like there's a niche market that we haven't explored but everyone's like focused on america even in india the scene is amazing like it's it's blown up and every time i perform in india as well like i i get that sense of like okay this is what real comedy is supposed to be like like people come to pay attention in a room i still had to pay for like one of the rooms uh in mumbai but like it was it was such a great experience mm. and even uh yash was talking about this the other day where he was like you know if you if you want to actually truly make it as a comic then those kind of places are are important to to kind of look at to because he was talking about how like over here you could have an amazing show people might come up to you after and like shake your hand or whatever but they're not like oh my god when's your next show i have to come to your next show mm. you don't get those die hard fans here yeah and that's but that's they're not something. like that in america either like in yeah. la and la and new york they just show up yeah. to the comedy store and stuff and they know that those are the big comedians but when they go to like let's say connecticut or something that's when there's a diehard fan someone has heard on the podcast or on instagram i think the most jealous thing of me, for me was not you going to the laugh factory and those places it was that you met like bobby lee and chris mm, yeah. and those people because those people like i listen to their podcasts all the time so i was like dude it's way better i think if you guys go just enjoy the shows mm. don't mm. perform i got to see it i got and so a lot of special guests come through uh, mm. there's a Chappelle story i'll tell you about that later but a lot of famous people come through so i go to the comedy store man the comedy store guys are hilarious like this one guy has a story about Chappelle performing and how like they had to keep it hush hush and like nice. only 50 people were through and it's like kim kardashian came and pete davidson and he's like kim kardashian believe it or not out of all the celebrities was the nicest person there nice you know she like and everyone else was just trying to be like they had instructions and they pat you down when you go to the comedy store yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. the comedy store door guy i forgot his name dominic i think really funny dude he's like you won't believe how many times i've found like a knife or something <gasps> wow. and people are like oops i forgot it's like imagine like it's crazy you know wow so i go to the comedy store i'm talking to one of the door guys luke he's a really nice guy uh, that's where i got your gifts from and uh, uh he goes he's talking to ali wong and ali wong's talking to him. i'm like hey ali um you should come to uh, dubai and she goes are you from dubai i'm like yeah are you a comedian i'm like yeah i was like by the way my invitation i didn't mean like i'm a rich guy you can fly my private jet every person when you say you're dubai yeah. they think rich uh, exactly so you'll take care of everything yeah. yeah i was she's like how far is it i was like 16 hours she's like mm, no i'm not gonna do that <laughs> so then i go to the improv <laughs> go watch the show and then the host is like hey guys at the improv you know sometimes we get a lot of special guests give it up for ali wong and ali wong comes same night okay and there it's like a triangle there's nice. the comedy yeah. store here the laugh factory and the improv Bro. she does her set at the end of it she goes so uh, i haven't been on i haven't done stand-up for six months this is like my third show anyone has any questions for me her whole set before that she was talking about her being divorced and yeah. and then she's like now all i want to do is just meet guys that's not the term she used. she wanted to get deed down mm. okay she kept saying all i want to do is get deed down <laughs> one of that ali don't yeah <laughs> 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 and then she goes she goes but it's weird because i've divorced my husband but we love each other and we're co-parenting and he still lives in the house and our kids are there so she's like i have to bring these guys over and like my husband's there and it's like mm. hi hi so after the show she's after her set, she's like, anyone has questions? People ask questions. And I go, hey, Ali, I got a question. Uh, I was like, would you ever leave with a guy after a show? And she goes, weren't you at the comedy store? 
I was like, yeah, I was. She's like, are you stalking me? I was like, no, I'm just... Yeah, and you're a comedian as well, right? I'm like, yeah. And then and you hear the crowd go, ooh. ooh. Nice. And, and, and then she goes, would I ever leave with a guy after a show? Um, I don't know. What do you do? And I'm like, I'm a dentist. And she's like, you're a dentist and a comedian? I'm getting like, uh, what is it called? Tinder swindler vibes. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I've been, I've been called that before. She's like, that's not a good sign. I love and, Ali Wong. And then she goes, she goes uh, I was like you haven't answered the question and then she goes would i leave with i mean no maybe if i knew the guy hmm. and then i asked about you at the comedy store so they do know you i'm like where are we going with this what's happening <laughs> like and then ooh. yeah she yeah ooh, and then she gets off stage and then i would like to say that i followed her on instagram and something happened but nothing happened mm. and then after the show everyone's fist bumping me and then someone i told someone that they're like why don't you go for it i was like i don't want to go she has she has my father's name. Her name's Ali. Yeah. You imagine she's like, say my name. I'm like, no, Habiti, no, no I cannot. Do it. I can't. Da, da. No, I can't. no, this Baba. is disgusting. Baba, I would say Baba, but no. <laughs> yeah. So Ali Wong, if you're listening to this, uh, check your messages. <laughs> check your DMs yeah. on Instagram. No, yeah. but I think even like, for me personally, I don't want to make it about me, but like, even I. Make it about you. I, Talk. Speak your truth, boy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Manifest. <laughs> yeah. No, but I, I never saw myself being like a big time comedian. Mm. I think it's just making like a local scene laugh, maybe doing spots here and there when I travel or yeah. something. Good. Mm. That but should never be like a... arenas and. But I like Joko uh, style. No, I never saw myself yeah. as Joko. Yeah. I mean, I liked him in the beginning, but he'd become like very cheesy. Lately. Uh, well, you you lost your Joe Coy shot there. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, you don't know anything Sorry, about Hollywood Joe 101. Try to open for him when he comes to Dubai. That part out. <laughs> yeah. Have you guys ever? I'm gonna pivot from that because we were talking about Ali Wong and, and movement. Have you ever had a chance of getting a girl after the show? Is it like when I mean, you were single? When you were single, you're like, yes, I'm a comedian. What I'm are you gonna be to able say? to get a girl. I actually have like, a, like story a date about that. after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Was, uh, a date. A date. I'm a, date. a good Muslim boy. Jimmy, <laughs> don't talk about this. I don't this know, is haram. I, don't know this is I remember. <laughs> pick up girls. After. Dates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, the I've only picked up guys. <laughs> 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 I've, had, I've had people sleep on my couch. <laughs> I was at a show in uh, Clavicord once, and I was doing. I did a set, and then after the show, I remember uh, Maher was doing some jokes about. Uh, uh, about I think black people and, and their hair or something that sounds like Maher and yeah <laughs> <laughs> and this girl came up to me and she was like where's Maher I have a be- I have beef with him right and I was like um, oh he's he's over there at the bar or something right and then she couldn't find him so then she came back to me and she's like some of his jokes were offensive and I was like yeah I know right anyway my name's Anand <laughs> 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 nice to meet I you I agree let's go home. I agree. <laughs> So then she's like, she's like, why don't you text me? I'm leaving with my friend right now. And I'm like, okay. So then she leaves. She gets home. And the same time she gets home, she starts texting me like, I couldn't focus on what you're saying on stage because I was just staring at your um, a tissue box accident. <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, stop. Like, yeah, she was like saying like all of this stuff. Wow. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, and then Girl I was really straightforward. Yeah, very straightforward. So I was like texting her back. And then a few days passed and I was like, why don't you come for this other show that I'm doing? And I knew that I was going to kill that show because it was at Miss Wang's, <laughs> <laughs> which is where everyone kills, right? It's funny how the dong goes to Miss Wang. Right? Exactly. Ali <laughs> bombed that day. <laughs> no, <laughs> did no, okay. no, so I had a foolproof plan for this. So basically, like, I thought of her name and I came up. I have, like, this whole bit where I do pickup lines with the girls yeah, in the yeah, audience. Yeah, yeah. So, like, I, I used her to do pickup lines on her, but she, she wasn't aware I was going to do Smooth. that. Mm-hmm. So she was sitting in the back and I was like, hey, what's your name? And then like I, I, I said something um, to her. I don't want to say it because it's related to her name and <laughs> I'll shout it out. But uh, say the then, joke without her name. The joke without her name. Can you do that? I mean, the joke has her name in it. Can so, you just say the joke without the name? I guess. Yeah. OK, so it translated to some language. And uh, I said, I don't know uh, where I'm going in life, but I do know I got to have faith. And faith translates to her name in some random language. Okay. Don't look it up, folks. Okay. But then okay. she was like, oh, my God. And then she melted. Yeah. She's like, oh. Did that work? It did work. Yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. It was great. Yeah. So can you, okay. can you text so you me killed that? It. I killed it. I killed it. Yeah. <laughs> <Text me laughs> but in general, comedy works really well, like, uh, for picking up women. I don't know. Do you have any? 
Uh, I have never, ever, 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 That's ever. I think it works. Ever. Look it at does. Pete Davidson. No, Funny guys. No, it does work. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. You get the attention. Like people will talk to me after the show and I'm yeah. like, I'm cool. Yeah. I got to go back to my mom's house. This is not going to work. <laughs> They're like, hi, mom. I met this person <laughs> after a show. He's wanna... trying to keep it halal. He's yeah. used his comedy card one too many times. <laughs> you know, with great power man. comes great responsibility. Did <laughs> that start the yeah, exactly. beginning of the pod? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Josh, what about you? Yeah, Josh, what about you? You. Janine and I met. Oh. Uh, Janine comedy. and I. Didn't you tell me that best. initially? <laughs> initially, you started comedy to like pick up women. Yeah, yeah I remember. To win yeah. a girl yeah. over basically never worked. You make out. it sound went a lot home. better than I. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I went home and cried that day. Damn. And I'm like, comedy is not my thing. But you know, Ima, she's like, oh, another Filipino comedian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's do groom this. him to yeah. become another. I'm glad. I'm glad she. Yeah, I'm glad you. she did really push me. And then yeah. I co- I came back and that's where I met you for the first time. Yeah, but I, I remember. did two minutes at a comic on show. Comic on. And I that whole like three weeks building up to that, my anxiety was through the roof. Like just memorizing wow. two minutes of jokes. Damn. Wow. And I did okay. <laughs> but you, but you evolved, man. Like you really evolved. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I'm yeah. Glad. I think all of us have evolved like so much. Like first time I saw Anand. Oh, that guy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. First host. time you saw me, I had a lot more hair <laughs> and a lot less jokes. I'm glad you grew the beard out, my guy. Yeah, I'm telling I'm you this. See, I told you about the beard, and look how it did. Now I'm telling you about the animation. Listen to your ad- the advice of your father. <laughs> no, Listen to the talented. advice of their father. Very, very talented on him. The Nepalese father. The Nepalese father. Yeah. The only problem with me is I get into too much trouble because, like, I like to do this. Oh my god! So this happened to me yesterday, and it was too funny not to share with you guys. So, basically, uh, I get added into this WhatsApp group, right? Which, by the way, like, I it's 2022, guys. We need to have consent before being added into <laughs> WhatsApp groups. That's I, I was just gonna say, who added you randomly? It's to this a, it's the worst feeling in the world. It's like digital assault. Yeah. yeah. Like being added to a WhatsApp group is like being forced into a room with like 45 random people. And yeah. you get announced like. Anand has now joined yeah. the group. Has now joined the group, <laughs> and it's like, here are your friends. Socialize. And but who added you? A friend or no? Just... No. So I got added into the group by uh, a bank, and let's just say it's what? one of the worst banks in my opinion. Here, I hate, I hate the bank because no, like if you go to them with seven, I can think of. Right I, 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 I won't Don't say, say which name. name, what the name is. Do they is. have a, a what? female assistant on the phone? They might. Okay. Let's just say if you go to them with a problem, they're gonna say it's not a big deal. Okay. And that's a hint for everyone, but I'm not going to say. Anyway, it was a charity run for this bank, right? And I'm in the group now. (laughs) That was uh, a big hint. Yeah. (laughs) I don't don't, don't, don't know which one it is. (laughs) We have people like Joshua in the audience. Charity run for a bank. Okay, let's not. Oh! So it's a charity run for a bank. All right, so I, I ignore it. I go to bed, right? I wake up in the morning and I see people congratulating each other, sending messages like, oh my God, Christine, you did so amazing. Heart, trophy, emoji, eggplant, whatever. So, <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm like, I, I consider myself like Gordon Ramsay, right? I like to stir the pot a little bit. You know, I like to, I like to get uh, this thing. So uh, everyone's like congratulating each other. And I leave a message on there saying, Where's the race? I have been walking around in the parking lot for 45 minutes no and way. I can't find the start line, right? A couple of minutes go by. One of the person replies to me and he goes, uh, dude, it was at 8 a.m. and you missed it, right? And I'm like, no, this can't be happening. I've been preparing for this race for months. <laughs> <laughs> I start saying all of this stuff. I'm like, I- I've been conditioning. I stretch, <laughs> right? And they're like, uh, dude, it's, it's, uh, it's done now. It's over, you know? And then a couple more minutes go by and someone posts a picture of two kids in a wheelchair. And then I realized that the charity run was for people with disabilities. Oh, oh my God. So on one hand, I'm conflicted, right? <laughs> because it's still really funny. No, you double right? down. I double down. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I ended up realizing that out of everyone that participated in that race that day, I looked the most disabled out of everyone in this group. Oh, no. <laughs> it was just bad. That's hilarious. But it was a funny way to wake up yesterday. I was like, oh, my God. Did um, they kick you out of the group afterwards? Or? No, I left out of my own group. Okay. I was like, I will leave. Then now. they added you back and like, okay. where, did you, where do you think you're going? Is it because you're a top G? Is that why you left the group? It's because I'm top G. <laughs> How the hell did you end up in that WhatsApp group, though? They just got my number from somewhere and they just added me to the oh, thing. But banks don't, oh, cannot what? do that, I guess. Must Super be part random. Of their... Oh, you can apparently stop yourself from being invited to a group on WhatsApp. 
Really? This setting, Without right? your consent? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Consent mm, is, there you go. They have to send you an invite link. Yeah. No, but are, don't you guys agree like WhatsApp groups are like sometimes anxiety inducing when I, you don't want to be there as well? I put them on mute. Yeah. I put so, them but on what mute. if it's like your boss uh, just coming in and like, who wants to get drinks with me? Starts tagging everyone in the group. Mm-hmm. No, see, if it, I, I would prefer that rather than getting calls from people. Like, I hate mm, phone yeah. calls. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah phone Josh calls hates yeah. phone calls. And do you do the thing where, like, you let it ring all the way through and then you call them back on your own conditions? No, I, I what I do is, like, I wait for it for them to stop calling. I add them as a number and check if they have WhatsApp and I just same. see the display picture. Oh, and dude, see. same. Yeah. There's wow, an app. that's a lot of There's work. There's an app called Real Caller ID. You should download it. It'll tell you sometimes who the number is. You oh. just put the number. It's very good in the UAE. But... The con is they take your number and put it to and their put database. It as well. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. But it's fine. They it's take like some the info LinkedIn to give. the LinkedIn viewing thing. If yeah. you want to see who viewed your profile, you have to. Yeah. You have to join yeah. their their cult. Why though? This. What is it with phone calls that you guys hate? Uh, mine is just from like anxiety from previous mm. marriage. You know what? For mm. the weird thing is, for me, uh, I I can do random phone calls. I'm all good. If it's someone that I already know, and s- sometimes I get a bit weird. Uh, weird about it where I'm like oh what do they want kind of yeah thing. yeah yeah yeah. kind like, of a thing like I haven't spoken to this guy in like three weeks and then what does he want now all of a sudden or or like what is so important that he can't just whatsapp me mm-hmm. oh, Anand my... does the most friggin inducing stress inducing he, he'll, he'll call me and then I message me hey bro I called you <laughs> yeah okay, I, I like, did be doing it's that like, I, I know I like, I bro would... the phone told me you called me <laughs> but you messaging me saying I called you that it's like way important. more yeah. like type it and then I, I call him and he's like hey bro uh what do you think of like peach as a color i'm like what the why couldn't you ask me that <laughs> no another wor- the worst part about it is like i'll just say hey abs that's it i hate that dude. yeah I'm like at least oh message me like hey abs i just wanted to check do you know where i can get yes. good kunafa that, that is I, like hey abs and then i wait for him i reply. hate that that suspension and then you have to reply yes how can i help you yeah, yeah because yeah. imagine imagine in real life like i walk into the room and i go yeah. hey janine yeah and i just look at you <laughs> i just look into your soul that's basically that especially work chats <laughs> like if you have teams or i don't know what you use in the office or something but if it's like someone messages you mm. hey anand like, oh. oh yeah it's so bad or it's like yeah and how are you and you're like i'm great yes that's why i don't call you as much i usually just text you or like i'll send you voice yeah, notes yeah. or something voice like notes or like with him i just love irritating him yeah so I, I like irritating him so i still call him dude yeah. i get yeah. so stressed out because i'm like oh so like i'm one of those people like i feel like people can depend on me so if he calls me or message i'm like what happened and i call him back he doesn't answer i'm like Oh my God, he died. He died. <laughs> <Should've> <laughs> answered at first Something call. bad happened. It's funny. I'll do that with dudes. If it's a girl, yeah. I'll be like, yeah, whatever. Those, like, as we say, I'm like, who cares? Whatever. Yeah. Even sure. Aisha, my, my lovely, beautiful girlfriend, she, when I, <laughs> in the, I have to preface that quickly. Yeah. Uh, but uh, even in the beginning, like, of our relationship, I think she used to have that call anxiety a lot. Mm. So, like, when I used to call her, sometimes she wouldn't pick up. And I had to like sit her down and be like, hey, sometimes it might be an emergency. Usually it's just like, hey, where'd you keep the cereal? <laughs> but like, I'm like, I want you to pick up sometimes every single time, emergency. even if it's just for a couple of seconds, just to know you're okay and like yeah. something mm-hmm. else. But where do you think it stems from, though? Like, I'm interested to know. There has to be like some root to it. Uh, for me, it's mostly like a like if I'm on a phone, I cannot do anything else other than talk to you. Like yeah, if I'm on WhatsApp, I can WhatsApp. And then go make my coffee, go and come back. washroom and stuff. But if I'm on my phone, I have to sit there one place. Do but you, I also feel like earphones? it's a new age thing yeah, where like well. back in the day in 2006, 2008, when people had phones, they were much more okay with just calling people. Yeah. Yeah, but I feel yeah, like yeah. it's more instant chat now, voice notes, that's, send a picture message, all those things. funny are. how you, I hate, you know what I hate? I hate instant voice messages because you can't. You can't like check out other apps. You're committed to staying in Instagram and just be like, wait for this oh, voice. Yeah. And you can't fast forward. You can't do like 1.5. Try. Oh, I don't know about you. So if someone calls me and I have like laundry that isn't fold- folded, I'll put on my earphones and be like talking with them. For some reason, I want to do push ups. Like I have this extra energy. Jumping jacks. Yeah. If I'm on the phone and I'm a walker. I'm a walker mm. when I'm on the I talk phone. to people when I'm running sometimes. Yeah, yeah you do faster. actually. Yeah, I do so, that a lot. I'm like, are you okay? <laughs> are you crying? I'm like, bro, are you, do you want to tell me something? I'm just running, bro. I I'm do just... that when I'm when I'm driving. Like, yeah. like mm. I use this time to talk to people because Same. I know. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. 
keep me company because I hate traffic. It also yeah. makes me feel kind of annoyed because Aisha calls me when she's leaving work yeah. and she'll be like, it's a 30 minute car drive. I'm like, are you just using me for entertainment <laughs> right now? Listen to a podcast. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but it, it makes time go faster on the car. Exactly. Like you don't no, mind but I, I would yeah. never call someone on a full car ride. I'd rather play a podcast, listen to it or something. That's but fine. You're the weirdo. No, no, it's yeah. completely fine. He just doesn't want advice. to. And it stems from, I'll answer the question because Abs was asking. It stems from him not being able to have the right answers if it comes to confrontational conversations. He doesn't oh. like it. He just wants to avoid anything that has a hint of friction in it. He's a good lawyer. Yeah. You'd be very good as a lawyer. Uh, we'll confer. We'll yeah. discuss this later and exactly. get back to you. No, but yeah, but I know like, when people call us, usually they want to talk about something like, oh, I just broke up with my girlfriend. Can you give me some advice? I'm like, oh, I need like 10 minutes to think about it. Yeah. But I can't like give you like... And I'm a, I like my communication style is better when I write stuff and Same. when I'm like, when I'm like writing or this is or how good of a guy Joshua is he can't say no to anything okay mm. so yesterday we, we went to the doggy daycare of Max Max had a birthday party oh cute oh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. they yeah, saw the made this whole spread of like human food and dog food as well so they were inviting us eat some food I'm, I'm super uh, full I was like no I'm good thank you Josh super kind he's just like Okay, yeah, I'll have some. And then the lady was like... I just wanted chips. I just wanted to get some chips. Yeah, so he was getting some chips. The lady was like, look, I made some cupcakes. And look, look at the decorations I made. I made all of them. Please have some. And because Josh is a nice guy, he's like, okay... He started I don't like sweets. Wow. And he doesn't yeah. like sweets. And then he was eating oh, this like cupcake. Sweet, really? I don't really? like it. And I would, I, that's why I prefer chips or salty food over no, anything so lucky, sweet. So you just took the cupcake. So he took the the, a full, full on cupcake. And I was just looking at him. I'm like, this guy can't say no. Yeah. And he was eating it. And he looks at me. He's like, you want some cupcake? But I knew the underlying like comment he was telling me. Like, like, no, I don't want. I'm like. Through his eyes, okay. like, can you help me finish try, this cupcake? Try it next time, man. You'll yeah. be surprised. I used to be a, I don't like saying no, and just go, no, thank you, and smile. Yeah. Just, just leave it there. No, man. Like what I do it's is like, like no. I'm, you yeah. just did it though. No. People like, will no, ask man. me, hey, Josh, can you do this, this? I'm like, yeah, okay. Then I'll WhatsApp them like 30 minutes later. Oh, I didn't check. I have something on that day. I won't be able to do it. Like, Bro, yeah. let me let me tell you something. I got in so much trouble for this stuff, no. by the way. I had trouble, but someone told me very wisely, very nicely. Saying no to someone is saying yes to yourself. Yeah, that's true. And we're one of those people. Damn. I know it's hard, but you know <laughs> what helps as well is saying no to little things. Like, I find I find it very extremely hard. And and then like let's say you go to a restaurant, it's like, would you like a, would you like to try a margaritas <laughs> or whatever? I'm like, no. You have to acknowledge that. I know to you it might sound silly, <laughs> I'm so yeah. but to us it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah because you start thinking like she hates me she exactly. doesn't hate you she's just trying Josh to stop is like me. if i say no they're gonna spit on my food yeah but i used to be like that and I then i'm just know. like just just little things start off with little things like mm. do you want a, a strawberry margarita you hate strawberry margaritas yeah. just say no thank you i'll have yeah. sparkling water yeah it's just a it's an innocent question yeah. but things. i know you're used to having it weight it has weight on yeah, it and you yeah, don't I like always, i always care with people like Think and it's very hard for me to like disappoint someone. I'm a yeah, it stems from him pleaser. saying I'll in his head, "Oh, this girl made, you know, put in so much effort putting this food out, this spread out. Yeah, I want to make her feel special. I'll eat it, it's even a, if it's to his expense." It's a beautiful yeah. thought process. It's very nice yeah. of you. Very kind of you. Yes. I'll send you a page just uh, on on whatsapp and i read it and it kind of changed it's like a five minute read okay i like, think everyone should be able to say no even nepali priests but it just goes to show how like kind of a heart this guy has and when you're happy other people are happy man yeah people aren't gonna be like this rude joshua so rude he didn't he it's like it just as how much you put into people into consideration they should put you into consideration maybe you're diabetic are you going to sit there and tell everyone, like, no, I'm diabetic? Yeah. They're like, okay, you don't need to flex, mm. Mr. Pretentious Person. There's a reason for a no yeah. sometimes, you know? Yeah. I'm not trying to say, like, you're going to get it overnight. It just takes practice. This takes time, yeah. And I'm not saying I'm the perfect no man. I'm a very easy... Like, Sahar will grill me. Like, thank God for Sahar. Like, <laughs> she's <laughs> like after a show, she's like, don't pick up any more friends. That's it. <laughs> no more weird people in your life. I'm like, oh, I met really good people. You never know everything. Saying yes is saying yes to opportunity. Opportunity is good. You never know what happens. Not all the time. Not though. all the time. Yeah. You get stabbed. No, but I'm guilty of that also. Like just disagreeing with people in general, like about viewpoints and stuff like that. In my head, I'm like, okay, it's better to just like 
let it be or like let them think what they want. It is then, easier. Hmm. Yeah. It is easier. No, it's easier because like then at the end of like they you leave on a on a nice note, not like oh I met this guy on and then he disagreed with me about everything. But okay. then also isn't it at your own expense of like being your authentic self, like letting people know what you really Who think? Cares about that. No, no. But let me, <laughs> let me. I'm here to please people. <laughs> let me ask you something. Like right. me, please. <laughs> Can you remember a time where you went through something and then let's say you went home and like in the car you're telling Jenny like I wish I said no to. Oh All man, this is a very long story, but uh, the anxiety that I fe- fe- um, felt. Yeah. Oh, I felt like I was gonna die. When like, seriously? Can you talk when? about it? Can you talk about yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I can give you like the quick lift notes. But there was this um, guy who who wanted me to host. Uh, what is gear? it like? Show. Like a show, but it's like for musicians. Okay. And I'm like, yeah, of course, I'll do it. I'll do it. Hmm. Closer to the date, my anxiety starts speaking. I'm like, why did I say yes? Why did I say yes? Mm-mm. That he's like, oh, I just got your... Um, poster. Yeah, he's like, I made a poster for you. They tagged me. I never reposted <laughs> oh, it. And then they said, oh, we just got your DTCM permit. Everything's good. Oh, wow. I'm like, I have to lie that I have COVID or something. Because I'm not going to do this. <laughs> Seriously, I was thinking of literally everything. And yeah. this is Janine's friend. Yeah. And uh, that made it even worse because oh, she's like, "So, uh, are you prepared for the show? Everything?" And have I'm you like, told Janine at this point you're like, "I don't want to do the show." No. So okay. what happened is I started ghosting this guy, <gasps> and I don't oh. know. He, he, I think he reached out to you like, "Hey, Josh hasn't got me back," or because there was I a can't f- remember. Yeah, something. There's not that. like okay. The the fitting for the show is like today. Hope you can see you. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> it's like replying. we just they just discharged my grandma from the hospital. <laughs> she's terminally ill, but they managed to discharge her for the show. <laughs> can't wait to see you and you're like <laughs> <laughs> no but like my anxiety was like and then he starts calling and then i i freeze literally i'm, at, oh, I'm working okay. from home all alone and i freeze i just go to the bed and i lie down because i couldn't move like I had a oh crazy my god attack. dude and then um then i'm like i need to find another host for this and i and then i'm like but no one will do it for free because i agreed to do it for free and then i'm like i was thinking of anand first but like anand no i think he, he better be paid for this and i'm like let me check who else is there. Then there was another guy in our podcast, Hadi. Yeah. Oh, Hadi, the rapper? Yeah, the rapper. No so way. I messaged I like him and it's like music. So I'm like, okay, maybe he can find some sort of balance or strike in this thing. Hmm. It's like, no, oh, I'd rather get paid. Because like, <laughs> I don't want, like, what is the thing called when they just give you promotion and stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Pro yeah. bono, yeah. Pro bono. Yeah. And then, then he's like, no, nah, like, can you ask if they can pay me? And then I'm like, like, and I'm like, okay, what are you asking for? Maybe I can see if I can do something. I'm worried you're going to pay him at this stage. Oh, you did? Oh, what? Um, I didn't okay. pay him. I didn't pay him, but I was this close. Wow. This Wait, close to so pay. So did you do the show to or you didn't? Buy your freedom? So I just, like, I... S- Bit the bullet? I, so I met, uh, Janine was working home that day, and she was like, so did you tell them you're not going to do it? I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then she's like, and then she didn't let me go. She's like, you're not going to leave my site. I'm not going to make my coffee. I'm not going to start working until you message him. Good. Tell him how you feel. Good. Be honest. So at least in these two days, he can find a replacement. Mm. Yeah. But don't tell him like on the like 11th hour and he has this show without a host. Yeah, yeah. yeah, true, true, true. And he was already started messaging me like, hey, Josh, is everything okay? Do you still want to do it? If you're not... Wow, it, okay, it's he okay. gave you an exit. Very, very sweet guy, oh, sweetest okay. guy. And, I, and he came over one day and I was opened up the whole thing. I even like started tearing up because of how bad I felt. Yeah. Like saying yes in that moment. Yeah, and he's like, I just really wanted to ask where the toilet was. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. No, but I opened up to him. I told him like everything that I was feeling, this anxiety was there. Like I told him like, I'm... I want to always try hosting, but not like a music show where I have to do like small talk and talk mm. about music. Yeah. I'd rather do like in a comedy setting and that I need to mentally prepare myself, not something mm. as soon as this in Mall of the Emirates for like a oh, fashion wow. brand here in the UAE. Yeah. And with like UAE singers and stuff and like, what if I'm not funny? What if all these things? Uh, so I just started really doubting myself and then he understood the whole thing and then and I was writing the message to him Jenny mm. told me to call him first and t- tell him what I'm doing I'm like I'm not gonna call him are you mad you'll have a heart attack mm. and then she's like okay at least write him a whatsapp and I was writing it and I finished it and then before I was about to send see send he's I like, see his status online I'm like yeah. okay I'll, then I lock my phone I'm like I'll keep this until he goes offline yeah. but yours she, still says typing he's like yeah. Yeah, sure. are you typing <laughs> exactly. are you typing last hour <laughs> yeah. and then she got so mad like you better send it now. I don't care if he's online. And then uh, then I, I sent it and I locked my phone and Good. I like, threw it away, my phone. Well done, man. 
And then she's like, check your phone and see if you're applied. And literally applied a minute later. He's like, hey, no problem, Josh. I totally understand. Don't how worry about f- it. How we'll- did you feel afterwards? It was, I felt like a burden was really off my shoulder. But like I was thinking, okay, I'll just, it's only like 2,000 bucks. It's okay. I'll just pay this guy from my own pocket. No. I have COVID. No. All these things. I'll, like, I'll find a So Google I went the extra mile to think of all of these like scenarios instead yeah. of just telling i know it's difficult no. t- of telling this guy no i, okay. I can't do it you yeah, know that's tough. now now tell me let's say you're presented with that situation again what are you what are you gonna do are you let's gonna let's t- act it out let's yeah act yeah, it yeah out let's act it out okay, okay. okay wait wait let me be jordan peterson as well uh, yeah. uh greetings from toronto so you are experiencing quite a very traumatic response that could have been stemmed from your childhood i i don't think you can pursue your life like this joshua house of diaz would be very <laughs> They would be very. Why did it no, sound no, it, something it, it, else? It has Your to be. Ancestors would have been very. Dis- <laughs> no, I don't either. An Andrew Tate's voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do Andrew Tate. Do Andrew Tate. All right. <laughs> Top G. Top G. Top Lesson G. here, my friend. <laughs> I have a large contingent of people flying out from Romania that need to be catered to. They're going to be coming out and escaping the Matrix, and you're going to have to meet them at the Palm Jumara. The Palm is one of the best places in Dubai. And I want you, Joshua Diaz, <laughs> to come out and talk to them. Because the top G is going to be there just being the top G. <laughs> You're going to have to be there to entertain all of them. Can you do it? <laughs> I'm, I'm, leaving, <laughs> I'm leaving this monumental task to you because only you I trust. And I wouldn't ask this of anyone else in the world because right now I'm getting attacked by the Matrix. And I need your help. Will you help me, Joshua? I would love Before to. you answer, <laughs> I have to say that I had to pull some strings just to get a special Bugatti just for Bugatti. you that is going to come to your house, pick you up, and drop you back at the same time. Will you do it for me, my friend? Uh, uh, just a question, Mr. Tate. When is- Shut up! I don't need any answers from you. You're a brokey. When, when, when is this event by any chance? <laughs> this event is uh, happening tomorrow. It's going to be happening tomorrow at 8 p.m. at night. 8 p.m. at night? <laughs> yes. 8 p.m. at night. Uh, Will you please do this for me? Will you do this honor? Uh, knowing knowing that you, you can't possibly do that because like Janine... Because, because, yeah. <laughs> well, Kermit's my brother, actually. <laughs> He's the one we don't talk about. Kermit Peterson. But you know him as Kermit the Frog. Um, knowing that tomorrow you have something quite important with Janine at 8 p.m. Our wedding. Yeah. Not a problem. I've already arranged for it. We'll come. You come. You do the thing. And then I'll have it arranged my private jet to take you guys to the Bahamas. You can do your wedding over there. Bing, bang, boom. It's done. Tell me you'll do it, my friend. I need your my help friend. in this. Uh, I would uh, thank you for considering me, Mr. Tate, for this position. But I would have to respectfully decline. Well yeah. done. Well done, dude. He's going to kill me. That's amazing. No, it's so good. You're gonna look at you're gonna look at me in the eyes, the eyes of a man who has MMA faced you. so many competitors, Com- and they're gonna tell you that you cannot do this for me. Hey, listen here, Mister Tate. You, the real Joshua's out now. You better watch your mouth. Okay. You're in my country. Okay, wait. You're a bit too extreme there. Just a oh, simple I'm nose, now. I'm sorry. I didn't know I was dealing with with a man of your status. <laughs> I shall leave you to it. <clears throat> No, but uh, but it, it was good. How did that feel? Did you feel, <laughs> did you feel empowered? Did you feel yeah, yeah, yeah? If I can conquer the world now. Yeah, but seriously, man, like think about it this way: if you're presented with a situation, just don't feel. I know ADHD brain. I have to answer straight away. Just go. Give me a minute. Oh, let me think yeah. about it. That's that's. You're not saying yes. You're not saying mm. no. Can I get back to you? Can I get back to you? Mm. And it's like, uh, yeah, sure. Ninety-nine percent of the times, yeah, sure. And if someone says no, I need this urgently, then you should think. Hey, you messed up, person. You yeah. could have contacted me seven days ago. Exactly. You and know? always put yourself in the position of they need you more than you need them. They contacted you. So you are in a position, like I don't want to say position of power, but you kind yeah. of are. So we'll just be like, that. hey, I need a minute. Even I'm guilty of doing that with corporate trolls. When corporate trolls uh, reach out to me, they're like, can I get your rates? And I'm like, oh yeah, sure. I'll do it for like 2K. Instead, I should have always been like, give me a minute. I need to call my friend Abs because he gives me the I best advice for corporate so much, bro. Because I, I love it in his face. myself. Bro, we did a corporate gig. No, corporate. we did a gig together. <laughs> and he goes, bro, go. I filmed an ad and I got paid this much. And I go, Anand, I don't normally tell people how much I got paid. 
but I'm going to tell you because this is going to be a teachable moment It for was you. 10 times the amount ten times that the I asked for. the amount he asked for. And he it cries laughing. Paid, it could have paid my <clears throat> rent for that month. I oh. told Anand, I was actually considering having you in this shoot with me and I would have paid you from whatever they're going to give me. The and I would have paid them for. And I would have paid more than what he asked for. And he goes, oh my God, bro. I'm like, you mm-hmm. ding dong. That's ding dong. dong. Yeah. But whenever you're in a situation like that, Joshua, just think, do I want to relive that horror? Or do I want to skip all that drama? Yeah. There's nothing wrong with saying no. Unless you completely feel comfortable. And know? also, bro, just do whatever genuinely excites you. Like, if you don't want to do it, man, that's another thing that he also taught me, like, with the corporate shows and everything. Like, if, like with the music thing, you know, like, if it genuinely excited you to do it, then you should have said yes. But no, I, I, I know, like, hosting is something that I always wanted to try to do. And I think it can really elevate my comedy i don't want to say career but like how good i am as a, as a comedian like just sure. doing comfort on yeah, stage exactly sure, yes sure, sure. and i'm like okay this might be the right opportunity but then again like i don't know why like last minute i just started just try out gigs that we do host that That's yeah, yeah, a yeah very find a comfortable environment first mm. but because corporate and like big mall events and stuff that's highly intense even me i've been doing stand-up for 12 years I'm still not comfortable. Mm. Like I get sometimes like as a joke, not as a joke, like a corporate gig would hit me up and I'd throw a stupid number mm. because I know I'll hate it. Uh, 99% of the time I hate it, but I'm like, at least the big money comes, big in. comes in and I go, okay, at least I'm getting paid this much. Yeah. So just suck it up for like two hours, three right, hours. Right, right, right. You know, but do something where you're comfortable with. I'm guilty of saying yes to things and then on the day I'm like, I don't want to I should have said no. Yeah. That's also an ADHD thing, by the way. I don't know if you know. Like, yes, after man. this, we'll be like, yo, guys, that was such a great episode. I wish we can catch up next week. Let's try doing another episode. <laughs> we'll feel that high. We'll go in our cars, still high. But the moment we get home, we're like, ah, oh, man, next week again. Yeah, but. So it's always like that. Like, oh, we'll go get dinner or something. We'll Dampa. Yeah. Still so, waiting on Dampa. Yeah. So it's, it's usually like that. So yeah. Ding dong. That's that. Any uh, closing dong. things from Janine? Well, hopefully that that ends on a good note, Josh. Hopefully yeah. you can say no because I'm be usually the bad and cop. I'm like I felt attacked. I'm, usually, and I'm the bad <laughs> cop. Yeah. You I are? have to say the no. I have to be like, whoops, you know, we'll we'll get back to you. Or I have to be like the manager of his yeah. hosting yeah. comedy career. Think of it as saying yes to yourself. Yeah. Not you're saying no to someone. I'm mm. saying yes to myself. What does little Joshy want? That's a very good. Yeah. Yeah. That helped me a lot. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but, you know, start with dumb things. Like we're going to mess with him after the pod. We're going to start asking him stuff that we know that makes him uncomfortable and just see if he says no. Just condition you, my guy. Hey, can I, uh, can I uh, use your living room as a washroom? <laughs> hey, can, <laughs> yeah, I use yeah, your, sure. can I use your studio tomorrow? Hey, can I flash your neighbors <laughs> from your balcony? Yeah, sure, bro. Whatever makes you happy. <laughs> yeah, I can use your studio. Hey, that is an open invitation for you guys. You're always welcome here, guys. Oh, uh, thanks, bro. Both um, of you. Fantastic. Yeah. Hey. We're going to be here a yes. lot. Yes. Hey. Again. Doing more yeah. than you like. <laughs> You'll be here. Hey, the next episode of Have Half a Nice Day, can I fill in your spot and just be the host with Janine? Say no. No. Say no. No. He was he was about to say yeah, oh, sure. Yeah. Whatever. No, I thought it was like a cool idea. <laughs> no. Like how people like him and Bobby Lee's traveling, someone else would sit in for him. Do you like actually think it's a cool idea? That's cool, right? No, like no, having... genuinely, genuinely do you think it's a cool idea? You yeah. Think it's a cool idea? I mean he is a half breed as well. I'm the half only breed. I'm the only pedigree pedigree in here. <laughs> <laughs> the only pure blood. Oh god. We're yeah, all but bloods. you're always welcome here. Yeah. No, it's not we, we we didn't want to make it like that exclusive club where like, oh you need to have two passports to be on our show or something. I don't <laughs> even have two passports. Yeah. I don't even have one. <laughs> 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 What's a passport? The expo passport? <laughs> yeah. I actually have the expo passport, yeah. <laughs> Well, guys, yeah. thank you for being here. No, thank you so thank much. You guys. Even if we so didn't much. have like a proper topic to talk about, it actually went well. From circumcision <laughs> to Josh would take control of your life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> really covering a broad array of, exactly. of topics That's good. here today. <laughs> no, we love really it. went full circle. Yeah. Episode sixty-nine. <laughs> Full circumcision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, thank you guys Anything for else? listening. Um, no, I think I'm okay. Are you follow guys us, follow us on the the grams and the things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, put so on there. Anand, you can shout out your so handle. Anand to, you uh, can follow me on Instagram at anandraman underscore anandraman is taken. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you can follow me also on n squared on YouTube. Um, How do you spell that? A A N squared. Yeah. S Q U A R E D. And that's about it. Yeah. Any shows? Any upcoming shows you want to shout out or something? TikTok. TikTok. 
TikTok? Yeah, your TikTok. Oh, you can follow me on TikTok at Comedy, Comedy Bro. Bro. Yeah. He's recently, getting famous recently there. Recently he's getting there. famous. Did yeah. you see all those kids chase him? Did he's he's getting that? famous and he's also getting flagged now by TikTok. For, he, oh, yeah. yeah. I had a video about? that had 30 million views and they took it down. What was that about? It's a whole story. I'll get into yeah. it. Next you part. know that? Like yeah. his whole... It's like yeah. uh, Just literally, he didn't even say a word to Andrew Tate. I think just a fist bump is like, yo... Calm no, down. no, it's not that. He was sparring in a ring. He didn't talk or anything. Yeah. It was just footage of him sparring, and they said it, it's inciting hateful behavior. But it's the weirdest thing is the video that had 30 million views went down, and then there was another video of him sparring, exact same video, but it didn't blow up as much. And that one they kept up. That had like 100,000 views, and they were like, oh, that's fine. Oh, <laughs> so strange. TikTok's weird. TikTok the powers weird. that be. Yeah. Abs. Uh, you can follow me on Abs Ali Comedy on Instagram. Um, that's about it. I have a TikTok, but I need to work it out as well. And it's, I think I am Abs Ali. But yeah, just follow me on Instagram. Hit me up in the DMs. I like to reply to everyone, male or female. I'm not that creep. Shows? No, I just, like, oh, oh, shows? Yeah, yeah you can catch my shows on the Instagram. I actually have a big show coming up in January. If you guys nice. want to buy tickets, it's mm. like with a bunch of South African comedians, Lois or Gola. Simi Arif and a bunch and Ima and a bunch of other comedians. It'll be great. Blue Bloods uh, organizing it. Get your tickets January like 9th. Blue Bloods? January yeah. 9th? I think so. There yeah. you go. It's on my gram. We're still here, so we can watch. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Awesome. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you uh, Max. See you in episode 420. <laughs> exactly. 420. Can't wait. Make sure you guys <laughs> have, have a nice day. day. <laughs> Whoa. Twist my nipples. Yeah. That was loud. That, was that melody oh, was off. <laughs>